All right, we'll uh, begin the meeting with uh, public comment. Is there anyone that has a public comment this morning? Mr. Chairman, if Please. I might indulge the commission. As a former commissioner and as an employee out here during all the construction and having intimacy with the new facility, I think that, uh, you know, when you look at this room, you know, if you, you now have a state-of-the-art conference room to meet in. I mean, it's something that you as a commission, and I know that I personally feel very proud of for all the hard work that went into this. And, and I think we should be very pleased with the facility we have. You know. Of course, that doesn't come with all punch list items and those kind of things. But the reason I'm really here today is, is I wanted to, you know, something I brought up when I was on the commission is now we have a state art facility. I really think as a commission, I'm, we've got to start thinking about that parking lot. We brought the facility up, but now I think we, you know, it's not going to be an easy fix. It's probably going to take some money, so it's probably going to have take some planning on the commissions. We have to to accomplish it. But uh, I think Kyra gave everybody a handout because uh, I, when I welcomed her into the building the other day, I said, "Well, now, now I think it's time to start looking at the parking." Um, there are a number of stakeholders, and I think probably the biggest stakeholders sitting at the other end of the table down there, Thor. Mm -hmm. I mean, you see it every day, every especially day. in the winter time. The long term, the, yeah. the pain that your people have trying to keep the parking lot clear and everything else. So I, I think it really behooves the commission to start looking at how can we make that parking lot state of the art so that it eases the pain on the operator trying to keep it clear. And not only that, but it also gives the people that work here, mm -hmm. uh, you know, easier access. Uh, easy access. Uh, Kyra put some uh, titles in here, you know, what some, some of the things you need to be thinking about is long term parking. Because I, I, I checked yesterday, mm -hmm. and there's a couple of vehicles over there that look like probably they're almost abandoned. Oh, absolutely. That, that have been there, they look like they've been there over a year. Uh, so it's, you know, you need to look at long-term parking, the short-term parking, employee parking, and employee parking is, isn't going to take up a whole lot. For us at the DGS side, we, once the uh, trailers are moved down there for the weather station and the TSA, we basically got it. But I think for the short term on employee parking, you should at least think of looking at signage so that the employees that come here, at least they know that they're not going to have to sit and drive around the whole parking lot to find a place to park. Absolutely. They know when they come to work, they have a place to park. And you're only talking for us on the DJ side, and, and we've already got it, just we need to sign, is our six spots down there. And then down here it would be for TS, I think, Tyra, we, we figured it out, and all it would be about a dozen parking spots you're talking about for TSA, uh, CBP, uh, the weather station gal, and, and everybody involved down here. Are those and six dozen? Are they designated now? They're not signed, but okay. nobody parks there because it's off the end of the building down oh, there, kind of out of the way okay. anyway. But, uh, you know, and then you have the rental car <coughs> issue that's Absolutely. always cropping up. And, but I just think it'd be, if, if in the short term, at least get signage up to I'll start agree. because if you're going to take and uh, uh, seal coat the, because it probably needs a good seal coat and restriping anyway, mm -hmm. but and that's that's going to be a long-term thing, trying to get all those cars moved and everything else mm -hmm. to, to be able to do that. But I, I really think that at least some signage I for totally the short-term. Yeah. That, that has to be a, some controls put in place. There's no question we have, we have an issue with long-term parking, factually. And and frankly, it's been that way since day one. You know, folks call us up, is there a limitation? No, they know. They promise to stay a week, they stay a month. You know, they, they use it and as a transfer at, point. And therefore, we only have two flights a day with 50 passenger Correct. plane. And look how many cars are Exactly. So, I, so I want to know who took the picture. <laughs> Google. <laughs> Mr. Google. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. Right? And then, then like, when you talk about punch list items, you know, Holly asked me to bring one thing up from from operations side is the big heartburn for us over there is, is the speaker system in the secure area. Mm -hmm. And we put those Bluetooth speakers in there, but they're hooked up to a, an ancient box. And Basically, right now the speakers are tipped upside down because you know, we're trying to find a way where because we still have complaints where people can't hear. 
Holly was just asking if there's a way because they're Bluetooth speakers to come up with a Bluetooth receiver, and I don't know if that shouldn't be that expensive, so that at least those speakers are Bluetooth and they can move. We can move them around in there to see if we can get a, a happy medium where people can hear. So, yeah, and, it, and especially for the older folks like me that are a little bit hard of hearing and, or people with hearing aids. You're not alone. <laughs> they really have a hard time. So. Yeah. But with that, I'll just say welcome to a fantastic building. I'm glad I could be here for the first meeting. Thank well, you. thank you for your contributions to the commission and the city uh, <coughs> over the years, Brian. So those are that uh, a very good uh, list of uh, stakeholders. Um, so yes, we uh, we will certainly put that as one of our priorities to work on the uh, the parking issues here and the speaker system. Further from the audience. Anyone else wishes to uh, address the uh, commission this morning? Pretty dignified audience we have here. Yes, you know. I gotta say one thing. Sure. That table was really nice. You know, Beautiful. In the fact that it was done locally. Yeah. Know. This looks special. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. No further uh, audience participation. We'll move to the minutes of the April twenty second. 2018 meeting, and uh, it was a long meeting, and the Kyra has long minutes. There. So, uh, your pleasure with the minutes. Sounds like the meeting I was at, I guess. Yes, indeed. I'll, uh, I'll move, Mr. Chair. Motion by Commissioner Pavlik. I'll second. Second by Commissioner Neverman to approve the minutes of April 22nd. Good job, Kyra. Discussion on the motion of the minutes. Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve the minutes signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion is carried, minutes are approved. Thank you. For the financial statement, <clears throat> we have regular claims for the airport of $97,699.59. We have terminal project phase two, $406,633.36. And then runway reconstruction project phase one claims of $49,870. And then runway project phase two unpaid bills and we have the Two of them from SCH, $183,530 and $4,570 and one cent. And then we have the um, claims that have been paid by uh, credit card or uh, paid early under previous approval. The closer with the uh, claims of the regular, the Terminal Project Phase 2 and uh, re Runway Reconstruction Phase 1 and Phase 2. <coughs> Move. Motion by Commissioner Pavlik to approve. I'll support. Second by Commissioner Nevin. Questions or discussions with regard to any of the claims for the financial statement? Please. Where did we end up with the? Uh, is it with the sweeper or the, or the snow plow? We were building. We're going to receive it. But refresh a little bit on that. It still has a, a, it was like five hundred thousand dollars or something, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yep, it's and been received. That, and we did pay the last meeting. Last meeting, and it's on. Yep, McQueen. That's McQueen. correct. Yep. And then I'm sorry, interrupting. Go ahead. No. And then uh, we also uh, uh, took the liberty that we worked with uh, both uh, Cummings Engines and with Oshkosh Truck to delay the to delay the uh, guarantee slash warranty on the vehicle as long as we can. Um, <clears throat> Cummings gave us two. It was interesting. Uh, Cummings would would would. Uh, Honor us till November, November 1, and 
Oshkosh, me starting the, the date for the warranty, and Oshkosh uh, said September 1 to be the place we could push it back. So. In years has gotten has gotten very particular in what uh, what accessories can be what accessories can be covered and what can be covered, and uh, what happens is it ends up either with a uh, then you work with, with the MnDOT um, at, at their level of funding or you end up paying on the local level exactly yeah the FA has really gotten uh, shall we say financially strict with equipment and, uh, and the accessories you can put on it which is really interesting I don't want to get too far in the weeds right. um, time consumption but as an example the uh, the unit, uh, two, two really important components of the unit is, is that the, the whole broom head vibrates right. to, to shake snow and also it has a, a hood uh, dump, okay? And within, within, <coughs> within a minute, minute, you know, you're, you've put a ton of snow per se, you know, an arbitrary number on top of the unit and puts too much pressure. So it's kind of interesting, they see some things that are literally vital to the unit, they don't see it as, as uh, fundable. No. They don't need it in Texas, so we don't need that here. Exactly right. Yeah. Just, I just had a question the other day, and I couldn't quite answer, so I'll get back yeah. to the person and let them know what that issue was. Sure. So, all right. Thank you. I guess the, uh, the only question I would have uh, uh, for Kyra is, is how um, are the reimbursements coming? Are they? Uh, are we seeing those on? Pretty regular turnover. Yes, for I know the, the city is carrying uh, something over a uh, million dollars in uh, cash out right now. Yep, and I believe we just got one back um, uh, for uh, was around eight hundred thousand. So we're we there. Don's really good with getting them in and <coughs> um, getting the pay us and it's paid and the funds back to us. So it's it's averaging about. Three weeks, I would say, for turnaround time. Okay, very good. Thank you. Other questions or concerns on the, uh, the claims or the financial statement? Hearing none, the chair placed the question on approval. All those in favor of the uh, financial statement and the payment of the claim signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion is carried. Claims and financial <coughs> statements are approved. Thank you. We will go to uh, the engineer's report. From, oh, we got to call up Bob Cordes. Yep, hello. Yes. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. How do we sound? Can you hear us? Yeah, perfectly. Beautiful. All right, welcome uh, to the airport commission meeting, Bob and Benita. We're uh, into the agenda, and uh, we're just going to start the engineer's report and have a terminal update. I was going to call uh, Steve and Rick uh, to the table and ask them to, uh, to give us a, uh, uh, what they might have. Pull up a chair and uh, grab the Oh, you're good. What about the Sure. What do you want to do? Pull head over here. The camera will be a good angle on you. Right. <laughs> Your IQ is guaranteed to drop a little slow. Uh oh. <laughs> we proved that. Can't yeah, drop much This was not as bad as the other table. Yeah. <laughs> this is a beautiful table. Yeah, nice job. Well, welcome. Welcome to the new, uh, new conference room, new terminal. We're starting to move things in. Um, Rick can maybe give you a quick update on where things sit from his perspective on kind of wrapping things up and you know, backing out the, the back door, if you will, and getting folks moved in. 
There's a few punch items left. Painters here, the aluminum guys will be back Tuesday with the remaining pieces and the ones they got to replace, finish up all the caulking. The front door, I think, is Wednesday. Those parts are coming. I think that's what he said. And then uh, they'll be here all next week, Tuesday through Friday, wrapping up everything. And then um, I think that's it. As far as yeah, so I think we've got a temporary. I mean, there's still some punch list items. People got to come back, but yeah, and some signage we got to do for Kelly. For occupancy. Yeah, yeah. he gave us a temporary. He said he was going to stop by today and give you the the permanent one as long as I put up the temp signs. But I haven't seen them yet. Yeah, I talked to him yesterday as well. He said basically, you know, we, we are okay. You are okay to start moving things in and occupy the space based on a, a temporary certificate, um, which frankly is just based on a couple of items. Um, the sign on the electric room that you can see in, in paper right now needs to be a permanent uh, ADA compliant braille sign. And then he'd like uh, to have some vinyl letters on that glass door leading outside at the end of the corridor that says it's not a public entrance, it's for emergency exit or egress only. So take care of those two items. We'll follow up on some mechanical systems balancing reports and things with him. But you are uh, okay to, to occupy the space. Yeah. So starting to move folks in, I understand uh, Kyra and, and Keita and folks are, are currently moving in. We have the other tenants that are in process. Um, some of that is within their own uh, abilities and you know things they have to round up to, to get in. Weather Bureau frankly, is probably the first, yep. so they're coming now. They're in, yep. Okay, so the ASOS unit was moved last Friday. Friday. So that is up and running. That went well, I think. And yeah. A long day, but got it done. Yeah. They came back Monday and finished the a GPS that goes to it. Or Coordinates. Yeah. So the weather bureau is moving in. I suspect uh, TSA is next. TSA's got all their furniture and stuff moved. They just need their computers after their inspection on Thursday. So they do have their inspection uh, tomorrow afternoon at two o'clock, yeah. I believe, to inspect their space. If you know we don't expect or anticipate any issues, but they need to approve that for themselves and then uh, let them move in. Customs would be last, based on I suspect where their equipment purchasing is at. That you all are having to, I think, pay for. We've had that discussion a few times. Um, I don't have a hard date yet out of those folks. It might be towards the end of June, maybe. Unless Kyra has any more knowledge of where the purchasing might be at. It's all in their hands. So. Okay. So yeah, we'll kind of keep our fingers on on that pulse. Make sure we're we're able to help folks, you know, while we're here and, and able to move in. Um, or can you know help TSA with anything they need? They will yeah. keep some things in storage in one of the trailer That's empty boxes. Too. So we'll start to, as they move out, take things away. I think Brian had mentioned you know the temporary offices over on the other side of the terminal that they're in. We'll get those removed as soon as they're out. Uh, give you that parking spaces back. So thank you for your patience on um, you know letting letting them have that space through the, the last year, really. Just uh, one question, if I could, Mr. Please. Not to jump around, but back to the jetway. And I just I just foresee a never-ending management mm -hmm. crisis, uh, the way that thing is performed. Mm -hmm. And how can we get that settled somehow? Well, that's a great question. I know we've had uh, some ongoing battles with, with that system. Um, you know, maybe separate that into part and piece. What what the issues are is what I like to do. I mean, solve one thing at a time. They're you know maybe related, maybe not. I think the operational side of things, if mechanically it's functioning okay, um, understandably there's going to be some things here and there that need to be fixed, repaired, modified, adjusted. 
Um, now that's kind of one thing. There is the water and ice kind of infiltration through that rotunda connection seal that we are continuing to look into. Uh, at last month's meeting, we had uh, asked if you would approve having an independent um, technician, if you will, come up and take a look at that from uh, Delta's crew in Minneapolis, Jeff Hudson. He has agreed to do that. Uh, we're just trying to get him scheduled up here and find the right time to meet and, and see if he can give us some insight uh, on the water infiltration piece. He may also have some thoughts, sure. you know, for Thor's group on maintenance, things to watch for. You know, I, I don't know what count he watches over Minneapolis, but it's probably 20 plus or 30 of these minutes. Yes. The one thing that we've not had a chance, unless Bob Kors has any updates, I know you were having uh, a conference last month in Wilmer that maybe you were able to touch bases with some other airport facilities, uh, Hibbing, Brainerd, whoever may have another jet bridge similar to this, to see if they have any issues also, and are they pitched the way yours is, or are they higher they're, up? They're all pitched. They're all pitched different than ours. They are. Mm -hmm. That's the issue. And I think some are different units. They are different manufacturers, yes, also correct. Certainly. But but uh, yeah, we're the only one that I'm aware of we made some calls that, that uh, the pitch is, is opposite of ours. I think the discussion, and I appreciate Wade's input, is uh, I, the question is, is that um, you know. Do we want to look into building a, a, some type of a structure above the, um, and where does that, and where does that liability fall, uh, you know, on the manufacturer, if if any? Right. Well, you'll keep us updated then. As Absolutely. Okay. We will. Yeah. So uh, today we don't have a hard answer on you know what right. the resolve might want to be. I suspect it's going to be a continuation of investigating um, some of the issues you have had and finding some maybe specific or independent resolves for them. Whether there's a shroud type cover over the rotunda that may mm -hmm. help keep some of the snow that wants to dump and come over the roof. Uh, how to handle the back pitch of water coming back from the main bridge section itself, roof, you know, onto that rotunda, and then it works its way in those seals um, and causes some, some havoc, yes. So we'll continue to follow up on that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, yeah, as Rick mentioned, kind of following up on some of the remaining punch list items. Thank you, Ryan, who wasn't aware of uh, the speaker issue in the secure gate lounge. Um, you have any time right after this meeting, we'd love to go in there and Rick and I and, and yourself show us what the issues are currently and we'll take a look at uh, at that. If it's a simple Bluetooth, you know, independent device that can handle them speakers, then great. Because I think the speakers are probably okay. Right? The speakers are okay. It's just I'd like to be able to move them around different areas in there and see if we can get a okay. better sound effect. Yeah, because I don't think right they're, now they're just wired to that one spot. And they're, and yeah, they're I think they're so. attached to the TV. Yeah. So. Yeah, I thought they were Bluetooth speakers, but maybe mm -hmm. they they're wired. But nonetheless, even if it goes back to the original notion, I think we had of an independent, you know, portable PA system. Right. Yeah, you know, just the newer one instead of the old one that uh, you know, I think was in there. Shouldn't be expensive. No, I think a portable PA system, when we looked that up last time, was you know probably under $500 for a decent system that you could put a couple of speakers maybe over in the opposite corners, and that would help. Okay. So we'll take a look at that. Uh, I do have uh, a couple more items um, that we are in process of trying to coordinate. Uh, a couple of changes that are necessary to help complete uh, the process. The first one, uh, we've had some discussions, you might recall the past, of the current generator system for the terminal that is new from phase one. We wanted to, number one, increase its ability to handle um, a load possibly of the full terminal. And we did that, but now to actually do the transfer of some of the systems, uh, the networking, some of the outlets and things that are not on the system currently, to make that happen, it's going to cost some dollars to get that transfer done. 
The other piece that's missing, we were having some problems, uh, we suspect, on the building automation controls that are on the generator, but if there's a four to seven second delay before power comes on, that blip in power, we suspect, was causing some issues in rebooting uh, building automation controls and things. So if you put that on what's called an uninterruptible power source, it's a battery backup system that spans that gap. So it's kind of immediate, no loss of power, shouldn't have any blips in the system at this point um, once this is installed. So that's the other piece of that. The cost to provide both of those items with Hanson Electric is $14,372. So we're asking your permission to proceed with that work, schedule with Hanson Electric or those parts and pieces and get that taken care of the next probably two weeks. So that's a signature item if you all agree that will need done. The Commission's pleasure then on that, uh, that would be under the phase one. That's phase two. Is it going to be phase two? It will be phase two. It's part of uh, adding really this piece and yes there are some circuits that are on the phase one portion of the terminal that end up going on in that generator mode also. Okay, so this would be phase two and the, the battery backup for the non-interruptible service. And Correct. And transferring the rest of the circuits that are currently not on the generator, put those on it. So essentially you'll have a full building on um, generator backup, minus a couple of mechanical pieces of equipment that aren't necessary. What is going to need a cool Okay, instance. motion by Commissioner McBride to approve uh, change order number 32 with uh, Hanson Electric for $14,372. There's a second motion. Exactly. Second by Commissioner Bullard. Mr. Chair, Please. those would be submitted to FAA, FAA. Correct. for Correct. hopefully for approval. Yep. Yep. And uh, you said this only that seven second delay is only going to for the the controls for the buildings uh, uh, heating and air conditioning that, that, or that, that can, what do they call it the, the building, building system. Yeah, the building automation, automation. system. That's what the so battery that's, backup is. For. That will only control that. Correct. Nothing else in the you know the airport terminal. Correct. There would still be that gap of, you know, time, get the lights back on. Because in that seven systems. seconds you lose control, the AC or the heat does not start back up or, or whatever. We suspect there is some of the problems with the boiler yeah. that might uh, tie back to this, yes. Yeah. It goes to the jet bridge too. And, you know, we, so that was the lesson we learned when we had a power outage that it kicks off the jet bridge. So that'd have to be rebooted then? Yeah, I'd reboot it. Which in itself is kind of interesting. I use that term yeah. interesting. So <laughs> I can't believe you could design the jet bridge. But you got to call NASA on you <laughs> on a cell phone. We had fun that day. <coughs> oh, my. Steve, where <coughs> would this system be located? Uh, the battery backup system would be located in the back of the mezzanine with uh, the main the the yeah. space. Yes. So it's not, not with the generator. It's in a different location? Correct. Yeah. We would keep that in indoors and then we would make sure um, maintenance would understand, you know, Ted and crew what that means uh, to watch that, to monitor it, to do some of the testing. Batteries don't last yeah. forever. You know, we'll understand what the life cycle is of those units and when they should be changed out. It's another system that has to be tested. If you're tested, it will be tested functional. along with the generator system, frankly, um, you know, on your monthly test that you do on that. Would that be part of a standard design going <coughs> forward, or is this something that just is not standard? Or uh, I, I would say it's not necessarily standard. It's uh, it's good, you know, to have it. Hindsight being 2020, we now see maybe a little bit of some of the issues it was causing not having it. Um, so no, I, I wouldn't say it's standard, but uh, now it's specific to what the cause is and, and cure. I please. When we had this other discussion at the county with, with uh, Grand Digital, and I think Minnesota Power is like 99.9 percent .9 up and running. Yep. So. But that 0.1% can be an issue for operations. That's critical time. Usually, there's a thunderstorm or a 
Okay. Well, and I think you're right. With with computer systems today, they they don't allow for any uh, mm -hmm. any gap. Oh, right. You don't get. Yeah, so that's the primary system you would not want to have that gap on it as we're now seeing it um, and not let it cause any other issues for that four to seven second delay, so that'll be automatic. All right, further uh, questions or discussions with regard to change order number 32? If not, all those in favor of the motion to approve change order number 32 at $14,372, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, those opposed, same sign. Motion is carried and change order is approved. Thank you. I've got another um, change item. This is what we call field order 38. Did we change order 33? Uh, this handles taking care of some additional exhausting and return air work and other mechanical systems for some rooms that uh, currently do not have that. Number one. Uh, we have a custom storage room that they've asked to maybe convert that into an office. In order to do that, we should have some return air so that it's an occupied space instead of just a storage room. All it has currently is supply air. So we need to add some exhaust duct work to connect into that room. Um, Rick mentioned also now that the ASOS unit has been moved, the electric and IT data room is gaining some heat uh, because of that equipment heat offload. That room needs to be exhausted as well. And I think there's a third room, Rick, too. I think it was just a backup to the other ones that the condensers went down. What do you do? Wasn't it? There you go. Sure. So the other ones that do have mini split units, should there ever be an issue where, you know, it's 40 below when they shut down and the room is heating up, then exhausting that main IT room yeah. as well. So um, nothing too too hard about this one. It's just getting in and getting the ductwork done with Shannon's. Their price to do that is $2,990. We're asking your approval to go ahead and get that work uh, started as well and try to get that wrapped up in the next two weeks. We're going to have to have it, so. Yeah, again, a little bit of the hindsight being 2020. We now see that uh, IT room heating up that doesn't currently have any um, exhaust in it, and we don't want to cause any harm, obviously, to the ASOS unit, very general part of. Of operations. Which would cost us a lot more money. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll move, Mr. Chairman. Okay, motion by uh, Commissioner Pavlik to approve change order number 33 at uh, $2,990 for uh, exhausting uh, and ductwork for several rooms. Full support. Second by Commissioner Nevin. Questions or discussion? And, and who, who is using the one storage room for an office? Is that what you said? So this is a custom portion of that. Custom? Okay. In custom space, they have a storage room. And I, I believe uh, Anthony Jackson came and took a look and said we really don't have that much to store. What we really need is more office space. Uh, so the room is there. It's frankly fairly easy to convert. We need to take care of a little bit of, you know, life safety if you will, make sure it's got the correct uh, air exchange and systems in there. What's not included in that yet is an electrical piece to add some additional power and data connectivity for them. Um, I'm waiting on that engineering directive from the electrical engineer to come, I think, today that we can work with Hanson Electric to get that piece done. I'm not sure if we have to add a scope in that room or not. I think he said no. There was an email yesterday. Yeah. So the fire alarm system may be okay. It's probably just adding the, the power and the data. Um, probably on a common wall between that and the land room so they can at desk and connect up. All right. So forthcoming on that, I would ask that uh, we Get your approval to proceed with that electrical work on a time and material basis with pants on electric to get that completed. The exposure is probably up to $1,500 to get that work done as well. Then that room would be capable of 
having them fit up with another desk at the office. All right, let's take care of this one first. Change order number 33. We have a motion by Pavlik and second by Nevinen to uh, approve the uh, exhaust and duct work at $2,990 with Shannon's. Any further questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion is carried and <coughs> change order 33 is approved. Thank you. So then this would be change order number 34 and it would be uh, with Hanson Electric an estimated $1,500 uh, not to exceed for uh, uh, electrical work for um, the Customs and Border Protection uh, office space. Correct, yes. Electrical and uh, data connections. Okay, Commission uh, prepared to move forward with that. Uh, so that that can continue. Motion by Commissioner Buller. Yes. Second by Commissioner McBride. Questions or discussion, please. Steve, is that going to be an additional computer not coming to? <laughs> <laughs> not that <laughs> we know. We have to supply that too. He, he's not mentioned that. Okay. He just wants to make sure the connectivity, connectivity is there. That's a good question. question. <laughs> You're not going to have an office and, do all this and hook up without a computer. Yeah, I, I can't really answer that. I, I, I can only suspect that might be part of the uh, $90,000 uh, in equipment purchasing you've already done. Now, fan is supposed to be here tomorrow or today? The one? Not uh, tomorrow. Uh, um, there. It's Leon, I think. Oh, oh yeah, Leon. Uh, Leon. That's right. Respects for yes. TSA. Yeah. I'm not sure if that was planning on being here for the ribbon cutting or not. Okay. Thank you. Further uh, questions or discussion? If not, uh, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Uh, approval on the uh, on the change order number thirty-four, estimated at fifteen hundred dollars for electrical work. All those in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion is carried and that is approved. Thank you. Further, Steve. Um, other than that, we've been trying to vet out um, some security camera segregation, maybe is the right word, for customs. Card readers are on that too. And the card readers? I talked to Kenny this morning, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so we're not sure if it's a cost issue or not. Uh, right now, Nathan Reed, uh, the electrical engineer, is having some correspondence and telephone calls with Customs. Uh, Brett Shabazz and Sean Mahoney is their, I think, security uh, fella that handles those systems. They need to make sure that their space and the cameras that watch over their space are protected. Uh, secure so uh, airport staff can't just tap in and take a look and that they can download any recording activity from those specific cameras. Uh, you have one central platform if you will for your security system. For the whole for the whole terminal. terminal. Yes. Uh, I think there was a little confusion. I think that customs was feeling they needed to have their own recording device, their own thing, maybe within their space tied to a specific uh, computer. Uh, we don't believe that is the case. Nate uh, has had some conversations with them. They are recalling some of the original design discussions that they had, and the intent was that single platform should be sufficient. There is software that is already part of the system that allows that to be separated, so it's more of a programming thing to take care of. He's waiting for Sean and, and Brett to kind of email back their agreement to that. And once he has that, hopefully today, then we can start uh, figuring out the program piece of that with your installer uh, through Hanson Electric, his brother's fire. And then there's some card reader programming specific to them as well. And I think that's just a programming thing. It's, it's the same type of deal. They don't. Yeah. They thought it had to be all separate from everybody else. And and so we we don't at this time believe that it's it's cost issue, uh, but more to follow. Let's confirm that back with their agreement first, 
And if they do agree, we can solve this through the software programming that we already have that will keep it separate and secure. So just an update on that, letting you know where it's at. We'll continue to follow up on it. Um, that's really kind of about it. I think, Thor, we got, we've got a couple issues that yeah. we want to make sure are addressed as part of phase two and the uh, exterior cameras. I don't know where we are. With They're in. The, are they in? Okay, thank you. And then uh, we need to have a, uh, uh, and what do you call the cell phone, phone repeater? Repeater. Um, I sent it. I sent an email up to the group. Um, uh, Nate was involved with that. Bob, I think everyone, Rick and and Steve also. But uh, um, overly simplified, the building is a is a is a cell phone tomb with the virtually no signal in most of the building. It's really important for many issues, but we need to get a repeater or repeaters in the building. Um, Nathan had sent out an email for the sake of the conversation three weeks ago, possibly, and I realized he's busy. I, and I, I followed up with, with an email, a couple of emails, asking him, was he going to pursue that? Um, uh, basically, looking for some direction of you know, who's going to take this project on. And, this is uh, Nathan. Can you hear me? Thanks, Nate. Thanks. Good morning. Go ahead, Dave. What do you got? Good yeah, um, I think we were just talking about or asking about the uh, cellular repeaters inside the building. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. So, sure call. I got the um, uh, rep uh, to give me some pricing. Uh, he was giving me the, the rough pricing of um, thirty cents a square foot um, based on the size of the uh, the terminal building. I think that we can get away with a single repeater inside the building. At worst case, it would be a, a two repeater. Uh, antennas inside the building. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting that uh, quote uh, pulled together, together officially so we can send that over to the team uh, and to Kyra to get everything moving along for that. Um, is that the right person to go to with Kyra or should this go to Steve uh, Trudeau and Drew Krause Anderson? What do you want, Bob? Well, I guess it's probably going to depend on, I don't know that that's going to uh, be eligible with FAA, so I don't know that we want to do a change order, and I guess it's going to depend on, on the, what the price is, um, whether or not we can ask for any help from MnDOT, or if we just uh, locally end up paying. Yeah, Bob Anderson, this is uh, Bob Coors. I, I suggest that we do run it through Kraus Anderson and okay. put it through as a change order. It is for public use. All right. Okay. Um, so I'm not sure that it, I'm not sure that it would be eligible, but I think we should Try. go down that route. All right. Yeah, because the other piece of it, uh, I'll confirm this with uh, your call. But um, do you have uh, your local first responders have an 800 megahertz radio system? Uh, have we seen or uh, tested those uh, radios within the facility to see if they operate and function properly? You know, I don't know that, but I'll. I'll I'll find yeah. it out today. But we should have uh, Adam <laughs> yep. um, and folks, uh, so if they're in here with their units and they don't work, then... Uh, That's an excellent good. point, Nate. Yeah. We've got 800. Correct. So, but the question is, what can you say? You can that for me today if uh, you have that opportunity uh, with their radio set. Um, sure. If they're in the building, if they have coverage with their radio. <laughs> Guaranteed it'll be done today. So all the, the system would we'll work with all companies? Yes, AT, Verizon, Nate, you got that. Whoever. So yeah, the, the cellular repeater side, uh, what that does is it, it just takes the signal from the closest tower, and whoever owns that tower will have to coordinate. Um, they'll just ask us for how many potential users that would be on that uh, repeated signal coming off of that tower. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head who owns the closest tower uh, to the airport. Um, and then that signal is just captured with the antenna up on, a, on the roof or on the side of the building. And then there's a cable that goes inside to the uh, repeater station uh, antenna that's uh, ceiling mounted uh, somewhere in the facility. Um, and that'll give you the coverage inside the building that you're uh, needing. So probably the closest tower is Verizon on top of the water tower? The city water tower? I would think so. Okay, so it'll be through Verizon that we'll just coordinate uh, uh, the repeater. Uh, it's just uh, a little bit of paperwork, so uh, the Sure, call would go through that process as part of the effort of some of the equipment and contact that uh, service provider and coordinate those, those items. And then uh, if 
just a matter of getting the antennas uh, mounted and the cabling in, in between the antennas. Nate, I'll, I'll shoot you an email today after we test the radios inside the building. I'm assuming we're going to have the same issue. Uh, follow up, Nate, on um, where are we at with the power control lighting radio? So, uh, guys, thank you for uh, sending me a, over the information on the testing. Uh, thank so you. I'm just recreating a, a PR to capture the credit back uh, on the system that did not work. And then are we going to wait until we are reimbursed, until we install the new slash old pod control? No, What's think, our plan? I guess that would be a direction for you. I would say no. I think we just, uh, the installed digital system did not work. Uh, our function as designed and uh, intended. Okay. So we're going to get a credit back on that. And then uh, we have to install something that does work because of the life safety concerns. So I would say that we move forward with installing that analog system um, and getting the We'll start the process. Should we run that through, uh, run that through um, Kenny at Hanson, or run it through Kraus through Kenny to Hanson? How, do, how should we do that? Yeah, no, it should run through Kraus uh, into Kenny because um, it was their bids uh, covered that uh, scope of work. So okay. the credit will come back from through them through Kraus Anderson, okay. uh, and then the work uh, to replace with the analog um, should technically go through them as well. So. Uh, it'll be all through Kraus and uh, Hanson Electric, and then Kenny can uh, preemptively start working on that stuff, uh, knowing that we're going to move forward with it as long as you and the commission agree. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, I would agree with that. That makes uh, sense to keep the warranties and things in place and installations yeah. <clears throat> uh, together with them. Um, so, yeah, Nate, just give us that information. You and I can. And Rick can have more conversations with uh, Steve Hansen and Kenny to understand that and what they need to do to get the credit uh, done. So mm -hmm. that so it's not been deinstalled yet on the digital. That is correct. Once that's done, if I don't know, if they want to take it back and send it back for a credit or however they deal with that, um, fine. I know there was some discussion previously about maybe keeping it on the shelf. I uh, don't know what about a credit at that point, but if, if you did want to keep it for possible future use. Right. But knowing the problems you have with it, that's probably a no. I think, I think uh, Nate is correct. I'd, I'd recommend, quote unquote, send it back and try to get some credit out of it. Uh, Nate's been very helpful with, with getting the documentation and, and we made sure that we get the language correct in that. Um, also, Nate, uh, today we were supposed to be um, flight checking the temporary pappies on the electrical side, and then unfortunately the weather is not there for us, so uh, and then we're gonna, we were going to piggyback uh, for the Commission's uh, knowledge the uh, ILS uh, uh, 1 3 localizer uh, replacement antenna. But unfortunately, I don't think with this weather we're going to get that done today. But I'll keep you guys informed. Very good, thank you. You were cut out a little bit uh, there. Um, I heard uh, there was an issue with maybe an existing antenna, but. Yeah, it was yeah, not 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 an electrical issue, but I just kind of piggyback. Just on electrical side for the airfield is is uh, the Pappy uh, today. Uh, we're, we're, we'll be we were scheduled to flight check the, the temporary Pappies today, but unfortunately the weather is not with us. So okay. And then on the other side, and, and I realize it doesn't directly, but to share with you, but just just uh, on the other side was the ILS antenna to one three today. We were we were gonna uh, that system's been down for quite some time and. And unfortunately, the weather's not going to cooperate, so we have to reschedule with the You're going to replace that antenna, and now you're that is correct. Off on yep. doing that mm -hmm. because of weather conditions. So, Nate, okay. Nate, do you have a estimate of what you think the cost would be then to add the cell phone repeater? Uh, based on the thirty cents a square foot number, uh, I think we're right around. Just for rough number, 20,000 square feet uh, for both phase one, phase two. Um, so what is that? Uh, yeah, it's almost seven thousand. Six, seven thousand. So we're there. So yeah, maybe it's a six to eight thousand yeah, dollars thing. Uh, six thousand um, dollars. So for the system, and then a little bit later, so say seventy-five hundred dollars. Okay. Rough estimate. So just I don't know what. 
you all need to make a motion to proceed with that. So again. that can be installed other way. Right. It'll be waiting for a couple more on months here. <coughs> basis. I know, I know uh, staff out here and trying to call them uh, it doesn't work. And it's, and it's <laughs> literally, outside. yeah, it's literally for an emergency situation. We're dead in water. We can't. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yep. So uh, should we uh, not, not to exceed 8,000? A motion, uh, Commissioner McBride, to uh, um, have a change order to uh, include a cell phone repeater at uh, not to exceed eight thousand dollars. Second, second by Commissioner Pavlik. Further discussions or questions? I just think, please, we need to move forward on that as, as quick yep. as possible for emergency purposes Absolutely. and also our customers. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. No further discussion. All those in favor of the motion to approve that uh, change order signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion is carried. And uh, that cell phone uh, repeater is approved to move forward. Further on phase two, please. Uh, there, there is a, um, you had previously approved rewiring the fuel pump um, we've just been waiting till about now when we hope frost is out of the ground. Uh, mm -hmm. So that is still on Kenny, the electrician's plate to get wrapped up by uh, hope in the next week or so. So yeah, Rick and Kenny kind of help coordinate that with Thor, but haven't forgotten about it. Just mm -hmm. give me an update. It's uh, still pending and they'll get after that, get rewired. So hopefully we don't have any other issues with that fuel. Perfect. Problem. Thank you. I think that's all. Okay. All we really have, other than wrapping things the up. The film is coming the thirtieth for TSA. Oh, oh window gotcha. Film. Yes, window film. Yes. And Bob or Benita, do you have anything? I don't. Sorry, okay. Benita. Bob, this is Bob Quirz. I don't have anything, Bob. Thank you. You'll be here tomorrow to do the uh, check through. Yes, so Jess and I will be there tomorrow to do the, uh, the punch list in the morning and we'll be there for the ribbon cutting and then customs, I'm sorry, TSA at 2. Very good. All right, thank you. And uh, Rick, are you here through next week? No. You're not? <laughs> no. Is that, is, that? There is that anxious to get you out? <laughs> I like that. I got so, stuff I got to get done yeah. at home before Saturday, so. Oh, okay. You've had enough, yeah. yeah. So today will be my last day. But I'll be back and forth. Customs, Brett Shabazz is coming into town the end of next week, I think he told me. So I'll be here when he gets here. Oh, you will. He wants to walk yeah, through. Yeah, I guess just one more update on the, the customs equipment that uh, that we had to purchase. They, uh, they did get uh, an email back from them yesterday, I believe it was, that they it's still on order and they don't have a delivery date yet. We must not have went through Amazon. Okay. <laughs> 48 hours. Yeah, 24 hours. Are you moving on to another project then? Okay. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to Roseau for a month or so to fill in for somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. uh, not, you know, 10 minutes away, but somewhat nearby. Yeah. Where you but you'll be back be next back week so you here. can check the work on the aluminum and, yes. and other yeah. pieces. I'm going to come back and meet them one day. and. Okay. Make sure they get everything that needs to get done. You've, you've done an outstanding job. We uh, certainly appreciate having you on phase two. Uh, you know, we asked Carl Sanderson if we could. Uh, I know you did phase one, and we wanted you for phase two. And thank you for the great work. And thank you. Excellent responses. I mean, you've been very. Good. If I if I may share yes. a Rick story, I guess I won't embarrass you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You'd never. No, I know that. Uh, last uh, last Friday evening at, at the gallery at my brother's home. Uh, Seven o'clock, seven thirty. Yeah. Um, my phone started ringing, and it was. It started off with David Leach of the weather office, and I looked at that. That's a Friday night late. Now, there's no way it can be an emergency. <laughs> One of the very few times I said, "No, I'm sorry, David. I'm not going to answer you now." So, David called, and then, then, and then, the, the, and then the, uh, um, uh, David called again, and I thought, "Okay, I'll call him back." But just about that time, Rick called, and I thought, "You know, something's up." So to make a long story semi-short, the, the, the young lady who was one of the uh, balloon launch technicians, uh, the hardware and the door was not working correctly and she had been locked accidentally in her own, her own office. <laughs> and and uh, God bless her, she, was, she wouldn't, uh, I don't know why she didn't call right away, but, but uh, the situation, the family, whatever, it doesn't matter. But uh, 
I just wanted to say that, that it had to get to Rick for me to answer the phone <laughs> that night, and I wasn't, uh, and uh, yeah, so I wasn't in a position to help, so Rick called, I called Rick back, I called one of my guys, he came in, opened the door, but thanks for that, because that was... So he got her out of the office. Yeah. You were the hero. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and, since, and since we have him here on, on a little more micro level, uh, the door, uh, we had talked before the meeting, Bob, um, about for this, this specific door right here for a, 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 a buffer exit. stop. For, yeah, uh, oh, this, this door. Yeah, this for door. a bumper stop and for yes. a, and for a door holding a a, a, oh, a foot. Yeah, a foot and a foot. and some type of a. You put the stop on the bottom side on the floor. Or do you put it on the wall? Because it's going to grip the wall. Is that something that? Yeah, we're going yeah, to. Yeah, I to think do? I have leftovers in my truck still. Okay. I can put one on the wall. Do you have a foot to a stop? I do not have that, but I can. I know Anderson Glass had three of them. They were supposed to install. Yes. So that yeah. might be one of them. Well, we'll check I'll have on to that. look okay. at the hardware schedule. Mm -hmm. Thank you. If not, two by four will work. Yeah. I do have those. Yeah, that is a two by four. <laughs> yeah, we will follow up on that and take a look. Um, and if there's you know other things like that, as you notice over the next few weeks, let us know. Uh, certainly, we'll go through things tomorrow with uh, CH and, and Alliance. Um, I think we've already done kind of the mechanical and electrical portions of their punch listing formally. Uh, so we'll follow up on the civil, you know, exterior side and any interiors, get that wrapped up. We we'll expect um, kind of closing out some of the paperwork side of things uh, that we do have our occupancy certificate to report coming from Kelly. Uh, we're sending out uh, substantial completion certificates to all of your prime contractors. So contractually, their paperwork gets into you with surety releases, um, final punch list sign-offs, those kind of things. So they'll be made whole. That will allow them to bill for their final retainage dollars as well. Uh, probably one to two more pay cycles that I would anticipate to get to the bottom of those. That's it. One question. Uh, are we positive that second boiler is working? Yeah. Yes. We can't test it now. I mean, they're still running. They are running. Yeah. yeah. They were both running yesterday morning, I think. That's uh, a really good question. Though. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Have mm -hmm. not seen any further issues on that. Um, certainly they're not running at a capacity of one of those, yeah. you know, 20, 30 below, but we're still, darn it, into those below freezing mornings mm -hmm. for now. But um, yeah, the testing. Okay. Uh, of those so far, or watch over them has been good. Not having any issues. Mm -hmm. they, they retrofitted everything there. Very good. Good, work. good question, good. thank you. Other questions with regard to uh, phase one or phase two? Thank you again, Steve and Rick. Sure. Oh, please. Just, uh, could you just for everybody in for the rubric, ribbon cutting tomorrow and, and yes. exactly what? The What's going to happen and Good how are we going to do that? Um, at uh, 1 o'clock tomorrow, we'll do a ribbon cutting uh, for this uh, phase two. Uh, we will have a short program uh, in the area. Um, city is city bringing chairs and the podium. <coughs> and, uh, so that will be set up. Uh, and uh, VFW is bringing their uh, sound system. Elks Hall is giving us uh, uh, the uh, folding chairs to, to set out here, so all of that uh, has been taken care of. We'll have uh, coffee, lemonade, and uh, sugar cookies uh, for public uh, consumption, and uh, we will do a short program, cut a ribbon uh, over here, and then uh, Customs would like to have a ribbon cutting inside their uh, facility here in front of their, <coughs> their uh, name plates that are up on the wall there. So uh, that's what would take place at uh, 1 o'clock tomorrow. should be over in 35 minutes. Okay. And it shouldn't be raining. It shouldn't be raining. Now. Tomorrow's going to be okay. Yes. Well, great job, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate the business and uh, look forward to some future endeavors, we hope. But uh, for now, we'll continue to follow through and we'll, we'll see at the next couple of commission meetings for sure. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, I'm going to jump around a little bit and I'm going to ask uh, Steve.
Chamoan to, uh, to come up as uh, part of uh, old business here on the Schoberg property purchase. Steve, if you can lead us through that. I'll take the Steve chair here. There you go, Steve. <laughs> Steve, I see you. Yeah, Steve. Okay, uh, I think, uh, Kyra, did you uh, send off copies of that proposal list to everybody last night? So you probably had a chance to review. There's been a change. You approved the purchase agreement with Schoberg's here a while back. And it was anticipated the closing on that would occur on or before November 15th. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, because of some issues they were having with relocation, uh, they have uh, purchased some property, uh, they've contracted to get a modular home, uh, and the final payment on that's due June 15th. Uh, and because of some financing issues, uh, they requested uh, uh, and I've been working with Jason Alt uh, and FAA has at least verbally approved all this, that we would, we would move our closing with them forward to June 14th, if at all possible, uh, which would then give them the funds uh, to move forward with their construction and, and purchase and so forth uh, and we would then lease back to them for up to 90 days which they feel will cover their construction period their existing homes uh, and uh, we've got as a part of the appraisal there were some values and rental values established for those homes uh, but again in hardship situations uh, uh, Jason's been in discussion with the FAA uh, and they verbally approved uh, to waive those rentals. Uh, and so if the commission uh, approves that, uh, and, and we put language in there that if the FAA does not approve the, the grace period of, of up to 90 days, then they would owe the uh, rents in the lease. Uh, and for uh, <clears throat> uh, Randy's home, he and his wife's home would be $1,000 a month. For his dad's home would be $800 a month but we're anticipating that those are going to end up being waived and not be uh, income back to uh, the airport commission. Uh, the uh, language we've included in the lease, all the special language that the FAA uh, requires, uh, we believe there won't be a problem uh, with approval, but all of this stuff is, like everything, subject to FAA approval. Uh, but uh, spoken with Minnesota Title, uh, we uh, need to obtain title insurance uh, as a part of the purchase of the Schoberg properties. So uh, in Minnesota Title is the local uh, title company that provides title insurance and, and makes sure that all the documents are in order and there's marketable title. Uh, and I spoke with them yesterday. They think they can accomplish this by June 14th. Um, so uh, the onus on the commission would be to have funds available to and I think it's 320000 is the purchase agreement, to have that available and then there'd be a some kind of a lag time before you get reimbursement of the FAA portion of that. And then we'd have, or excuse me, yes, please. Then we'd have to approve the lease agreement. Yes, that's, that's what I, here today I would ask you to approve the uh, lease agreement and also uh, since the closing date is different than what you approved with the purchase agreement, uh, also a, a <coughs> approve uh, moving the closing date up to June 14th, or on or about June 14th. Well, to keep things moving, I, we, I think we'd have to do that. Well, I, I think, uh, is it fair to say that there's a hardship uh, case with uh, uh, Mr. Schoberg? We, we believe, uh, and again, Jason Alt has been working more directly with them than I have, but. Uh, he feels that there's a hardship situation. Uh, he's verbally run it through uh, the people he deals with every day, and they've given a verbal approval. Uh, you know, nothing's final till it's signed off in writing, but uh, Jason doesn't expect any issues in that regard, and, and based on what I know, I would think that uh, uh, the airport commission waiving that rent with the approval of the FAA would be appropriate under these circumstances because the Schoenbergs have been, you know, quite cooperative and, and uh, helping out the airport with this purchase. And her position with the uh, United Health Group has been 
terminated? That's my understanding. I don't know all the details I really or do. I don't know on it, but but uh, there there are definitely some <coughs> financial issues. All right, so the Commission's pleasure with approval of the um, lease agreement, and with that, that we would be waiving payment of uh, uh, their continuing to be on the property for the next 90 days, and uh, after June 14th, and uh, and then the, the closing, approving the closing of the of the uh, agreement on uh, June 14th. To purchase. I'll, I'll move Mr. Chair's outline uh, by Mr. Schmoll. Okay. Motion by uh, Commissioner Pavlik. Second. Second by Commissioner Nevinen to approve the uh, residential lease agreement and the closing of uh, the property purchase on June 14th. Anything further that we need to have in that motion, Steve? Uh, I don't believe so. Okay. No. One thing, I'd like, <coughs> me, one thing I'd like to see is that to make sure that we will waive it if it's approved by the FAA. That, that's yes. in the agreement. It yeah. is in there. Yeah. If, if it's not approved by the FAA, then the rental well, amounts are set forth then it was eighteen hundred a month. What you said, yeah. so I just want and to make sure. Showbergs have agreed to that uh, yeah. eighteen hundred. If that, uh, if they're they're very grateful. I mean, they they were, you know, prepared to move forward without a grace period. And what we had talked about was. Uh, taking the rents ahead of time out of the $320,000 purchase price. And they were fine with that, but uh, they were very grateful uh, uh, that the commission would consider a grace period and, and not have to pay it. Uh, you know, it's, it's uh, not a huge amount of money, you know, $5,400 or something like that, but uh, uh, probably much more significant to the Schoberg's than to the airport. Very good. Further questions or discussions with regard to the uh, residential lease agreement or the June 14th closing? Hearing none, the chair will then place the question on the motion. All those in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion is carried and the uh, residential lease agreement is approved and the June 14th closing is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Steve. I just want to make some comments as a <clears throat> citizen of the community here and, and probably uh, one of the more regular local users of the airport. Uh, I mean, this is a phenomenal facility yeah, and the public, we come in and we use it and we see how nice it is. But just having sat here for the earlier discussions and the change orders, we have no concept of all of the detail and hard work that went into, you know, we, we see the end product, you know, but it makes me appreciate it all the more when I, uh, I mean, and I knew there was a, a lot of work behind the scenes, but until you kind of sat through some of the discussions, uh, uh, it's just uh, almost mind-boggling, <laughs> but we're very fortunate for our community. I mean, this airport's the, you know, the, you know, it's really a lifeline for the future of our community, and, and I thank <clears throat> the commission for all the hard work and, and getting it approved and getting all the funding. And, and you know, there were a lot of discussions in the community uh, before about, well, do we really need all this and do we need to spend all this? And now that it's been done, I don't hear any of those comments anywhere. <laughs> Everybody's just grateful uh, to have it, uh, and uh, particularly. Uh, uh, enjoy the uh, jet bridge in the winter time. Uh, I didn't enjoy it the night my flight had to be canceled because the jet bridge wouldn't come back and we couldn't <laughs> depart yeah. because it was stuck. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know those are details that need to get worked out. And, and uh, so I uh, I thank you all and I, and I thank you Thor for, oh, for everything that you've done coordinating. Thank you yeah. for your kind words to the group. Wow, yes, thank, thank you good. very much. Okay. Sure. And just as a follow up to that, you know, the, the community at large doesn't realize how funding works. And, you know, Bob and I going way back, but uh, what, if, we, if we had to remodel the airport, which it needed, we had to do something with it. And to remodel it would have cost the local taxpayers much more money. It turned out it, we were better off building new and getting what we needed, and then we were able to get. Grant dollars contributed to the project. So 
So when people understand that, I mean, they, they, then they get it. So the, uh, this was the best we could do for the local taxpayers and still get an airport that meets the, the needs that we have. And by the way, our largest employer made it clear he needed a full service airport with regularly scheduled airline service to be here. So that kind of, that sealed the deal for Bob and I when we had that meeting, yes. I know that. So. Well, I think the community understands it now and appreciates it now, which is often the case, you know, ahead of time when it's being discussed, you know, you've got pros and cons and you know, it's like our sewer project, you know, with all kinds of people over the years that have approved or disapproved of various portions of the sewer project, but once it's in it, then they love it. They love it. Uh, and so I think everybody loves the airport and, and is very appreciative of all the hard work that went into it. Well, thank, Steve, thank you all. Steve, you know, I, kind words, but you just don't realize the last six years how much fun and games this has been. <laughs> <laughs> we, no, we thoroughly no. enjoyed every minute of it. Right. Yeah. Having been through a lot of the fun and games of the sewer project, I think I do have yeah. some uh, yeah, feel for uh, you know how much fun it is. Yeah, it's really uh, uh, if you have a twisted idea of fun, it's a lot of fun. Until you get in, until you work with other government agencies, you just don't know the paperwork you and everything you have to go through to get approval and to move forward and and to get reimbursed and you know, what goes and what you can't do. It, it's 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 a it's lot of work to do. Very a lot of fine people here spent a lot of work on this. So. Well, and we had great <laughs> partnerships from Kelly <coughs> and Hendrickson and from Carl Sanderson. Um, and Kyra has certainly put in uh, endless hours on this. So, uh, I don't think she's had a vacation in five years. No. Well, there's a lot of credit to go around. Yes, uh, absolutely. And, uh, but a lot of it uh, is in this room, and I just wanted to give my personal thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Thank thanks, Steve. Chair, if I can piggyback on what Steve said about public comments. And, uh, um, People, when they fly out of here, fill out surveys, and I just want to let you know that for the month of March, we were the station of the month in the whole Delta system, wow. and a lot of that's based on the comments on the, that come through on the surveys when people fly in and out of here. So, well, that's you know, that speaks to yeah, the Thanks to your, to your, the good work of your crew out there also. Well, we try. Oh, There's a lot of people. Yes. And, you know, when you get back about the jet bridge and all that, you know, people got to remember, you know, there's a lot of techno technology in this building. And it just takes a long time for people to get used to, you know, what buttons to push, what not to push, and what to do when you have a power outage and things like that. So it's, it's a lot of it's learning process. And you know, we had our heartaches when we first moved in on phase one, but I'll tell you what, you know, we've gotten through it. And, uh, just like the people over here will get through it. And, it's going to take another year to get all the funds worked. Well, the stations are should serve the committee for the next 30 to 50 years. Training people. Yeah, yeah probably 50 or more. <laughs> more. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. <coughs> all right, we'll move to um, runway reconstruction. Oh, Casey, that's you. You bent down, I didn't see you. You've been hiding behind me back here. Yeah. We'll fix it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, we brought a lot of paper again. Well, let's start. Sure. Well, Bob, I don't know if you want to share the good news from the FAA. Oh, um, to start off the year, Bob or Thor? Or no, go ahead. Please. No. No, you go. I got something in my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> it was bad timing. It was in my notes for later on because I should have shared earlier that we got the 14 million additional correct uh, yeah. funding and. Uh, and Bob did it. Uh, I got the call from Congressman Stauber the day that, literally within a couple of hours of, of the approval, which I appreciate the congressman taking the time. It's very nice. And uh, and, and uh, Bob had a, had, had a full interview with his uh, staff, I believe, and then, and and, uh, and and did a story. Uh, well, and excuse me, but Senator. Oh, thank you. Kobachar and Senator Smith have also issued that. Uh, okay. Was not aware of that? And all of that will be coming out, uh, okay. I think, in Saturday's edition of the journal. Good. Thank you. So if, uh, just to bring everybody up to speed, um, the supplemental program was an appropriation from Congress uh, for a $1 billion um, infusion into the FAA uh, airport budget. Um, and I think just to show the support of the FAA uh, in Minneapolis, um, International Falls uh, ranked number one on their priority list, uh, from my indication. Uh, from what I've heard, um, and I think that went all the way up to uh, the Great Lakes region, which is uh, um, Chicago and uh, um, all the states in between, um, North Dakota, South Dakota. Um, 
International Falls ranked number one. So they recognized the need uh, for the project. They recognized um, um, the importance of the improvements that you're making. And uh, they, they kind of put all their weight behind, behind this project and they, they came up with good results. So. It didn't hurt, or if I could, Mr. Chair, it certainly didn't hurt that Congressman Hubbard is on the Transportation oh, Committee. Amen. And I had, you know, I've had the opportunity, I worked with him for several years. I mean, he is just an outstanding individual, no matter what. And I knew he would do, do it as well as he possibly could as a Congressman. He's been great. Anything to add on that? Or? We want to do, um, yeah, maybe the frequently asked questions. Um, yeah. We can pass that one out to you. Um, so we have a list of all the airports. If you're interested, uh, we won't pass that one out. If you're interested, you can share that information on um, FAA nationwide on, on where that yeah. money went. Um, but they did issue a frequently asked question sheet on how this grant is going to be implemented. Um, so this is just for your reference. We won't go through the, the questions. But, um, you know, I think from you know the commission's perspective and Kyra's perspective, uh, it is just a normal FAA grant that uh, you will gather our costs and submit a grant request letter, and um, those costs will be you know evaluated and the grant will be issued um, based on FAA rules. Um, so it's really no different than any other grant that you would receive from the FAA. So there's there's uh, it's definitely the, the FAA has indicated that you know they're working through the details on how to implement the legislation, but um, from what you know we'll see on the user side and, and the recipient of the grant. Um, it should be no different than um, the normal grant. So, please. I, I think one of the reasons for being successful and ranking as high is because we started the process early, a few recommendations, and, and we were, were really positioned properly at the right time. Timing's got a lot to do with it, but having the right. And, and having a good plan. Yep, yep. So. Absolutely. Thank you, SEH, uh, for all of your good, great work. Um, <coughs> You know, and, and just look at the uh, the front page there. The administration uh, asked the Congress for a billion dollars for the airports that are listed on the second page there, uh, primary and non-primary airports that are eligible. And what they came up with, uh, the airports came up with close to $11 billion in needs or wants. And... Uh, I guess to, to, to have us receive the, yeah. the funds is really uh, just Amazing. wonderful on the part of our uh, friends at the uh, Minneapolis Airport District's office, uh, FAA and Andy and Lindsay and Gina and Tracy have been outstanding. Thor and I met with them in, uh, in Wilmer here uh, last month. Um, as did uh, uh, folks from SEH, and so I went over, and then we had uh, uh, Jim Kiefer from the, uh, was there from the Deplane office of the FAA, and last year it was Susan, Shock. Susan Shock. Shock that was with us, and they both gave their approval, and so that uh, carried on to Washington, and, and having that uh, uh, support just was uh, very key in us getting the funding for this reconstruction. And so we have now been approved for the second phase, and there still is a third phase, which is even larger, that uh, is going to be out there. So, any further, uh, folks? Yeah, any other questions on uh, the supplemental funding? Just generally good news for, for the community. Very good. That's, that's Thank you. huge. Lots of work that will be happening at the airport over the next, uh, well, this year and three more years. So. Well, that's a good segue, right? And uh, we'll keep uh, right into the, the runway reconstruction update. Phase one is, uh, um, I guess you could technically say underway. We have the temporary PAPI installed. Uh, as Thor indicated earlier, uh, the flight check was supposed to happen at 11 o'clock today, but uh, due to uh, a broken airplane in Duluth and a uh, uh, some bad weather, that's not going to happen today. They've rescheduled for uh, next Tuesday or Wednesday, so they're trying to iron out their schedule. They'll nail down the time for uh, for both the ILS and for the uh, the temporary PAPI. So, um, just for everybody's background information, the temporary PAPI is uh, was installed to allow SkyWest uh, a nearly 5,800 feet of landing distance uh, upon their request. So, um, hopefully, we'll get that flight check next week and uh, um, be able to stay on schedule with our. Uh, start of uh, phase 3A, 
uh, which is, I'm sorry, that's 1A um, for night work um, to basically shorten the runway to allow the uh, northern 1,000 feet to be uh, reconstructed. Um, that is going to happen some, some night work, uh, removing paint markings, uh, adjusting the lighting, um, and then phase 1B uh, will start approximately June 5th, uh, depending on how the night work goes, and then we will uh, open that uh, um, runway uh, in a short condition um, with uh, you know, being operating and, and be able to operate the runway safely. So um, 1B is going to uh, last uh, approximately 50 calendar days. And we reconstruct that and then we'll uh, open it full length. So that's, uh, that's kind of where we're at. So next uh, week we'll see a flight check um, and some additional uh, uh, work around the airport and then uh, um, the week of June 3rd uh, that one-way project will commence. And who has that contract? Uh, that is KGM. Yep. KGM is doing the uh, the bulk of the work. Uh, Hanson Electric, who's also done, done work on the terminal, they're doing work on the electrical side for, for the lighting improvements. Any questions on phase one? KGMs are going to be doing the work on our bypass <laughs> lanes. Mm -hmm. Also, they they got that contract. Okay. So they'll, they'll be doing a lot of work up there. Who's the summer? All right, well, moving on to the EA, that was published um, on May 13th. So the comment period for the draft environmental assessment um, is May 13th through June 12th. Um, just to kind of remind everyone how the, the environmental assessment process works, we publish a draft, what's called a draft environmental assessment for 30 days. It goes out for public and agency comment. Um, so it's available for the public to review um, at City Hall, the county courthouse, and the clerk's office on the public library as well. Um, and then it also gets sent to all the state and federal agencies. So um, the EPA, the DNR, um, the Army Corps, everybody gets their own copy and then they have the opportunity also to provide written comment. Um, so that period goes through June 12th. Uh, we will receive all of the comments, go through them with the FAA. And if needed, we would make changes to the environmental assessment document to address any comments. And then every comment that we receive gets included in an appendix along with a formal written response to each comment. And then that gets packaged up into what's called the final environmental assessment. And at that time, the FA would write their um, what's called a finding of no significant impact or a FONSI. That's their final determination. That gets attached to the final environmental assessment document. And then that gets, there's another public notice to say it's now final. Here's the FA's finding. Um, so. From a schedule perspective, we're hoping to wrap that up by the end of June um, and have everything noticed as the final EA document and all comments addressed in the FA's finding. Um, so that's kind of our target, is to finish that by the end of June. Um, we had a little snafu, um, our apologies again with the, the public meeting, but <laughs> little cross ties Minor. on the dates. <laughs> um, where it was published for the 22nd, I think we had intended for it to be on the 20th, but unfortunately it was published for the 22nd. Um, so we will have hold the public open house and hearing tonight at City Hall at 7 o'clock. Um, again, our apologies. <laughs> again. <laughs> One more, that would be really exciting again. Yes. Um, so that, that's another opportunity for the public to provide comment. They can provide oral comment if they wish, or um, there will be an opportunity to do a written comment. We have a comment card that they can fill out. If somebody were to come, they can comment that way as well. Um, any questions on the EA or the process for the EA? And this covers all the phases of the project. For the next four years. Yep, yep, all the way through the, the final phase of the runway. Thank you. All right, all right moving on to phase two, uh, and that's the reconstruction of taxiway alpha. And uh, just a reminder, we're um, grading after runway standards. It's kind of the, the purpose of, of this project. This is a uh, actually what the, the supplemental grant was for. So this is uh, what, what the FAA is supporting uh, with that supplemental grant. Um, we've uh, pretty much had all hands on deck wrapping up those plans. It's been quite an effort, um, but we're at a position now where we are requesting permission to advertise the project. Um, so that's just some normal advertising process in uh, the local paper and some trade journals. Um, and the plans will be posted uh, either Friday or first thing uh, Tuesday morning. Uh, for review by contractors. And then uh, we'll have our bid opening uh, scheduled for June 25th at 2, 2 p.m. I'm going to double check our dates just to make sure that's the right one. 
Um, <laughs> can't, you can't check enough these days. Yeah, so that's a Tuesday, June 25th, 2 p.m. Uh, is our scheduled day. So, 2019? 2019. I'll never get it all right. Yeah. Approximately one month. That ties days. in then with the uh, Airport Commission meeting on uh, Wednesday, June the 26th, so that uh, the Commission would be in a position to take action if uh, everything is in order. That is correct. Okay. The okay. Airport meeting on the 26th. Yes. Okay, so. Um, is there approval, motion by Commissioner Pavlik to uh, advertise the, uh, the project? Uh, advertise the, uh, the project and uh, uh, open bids on Tuesday, June 25th at 2 p.m. at City, City Hall. Hall. Okay. Yep. All right. I'll, I'll be missing both those meetings. I'll be in League of Minnesota City. Yeah, I know. We, I'm going to stay here for uh, for Wednesday because of that. So maybe have someone else sit in uh, as a commissioner. Yeah, the League of Minnesota City starts their conference that Wednesday morning. So is there a second of the motion to uh, advertise and uh, open bids? Second. Second by Commissioner McBride. Questions or discussion? There are not uh, all questions, or the chair would place the question on the uh, approval of the calling for bids and the opening of bids on June the 25th. All those in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion is carried and the bids will be advertised. Thank you. The second item is the independent fee estimate at your last commission meeting. Um, you approved uh, getting quotes from Becker Hoppy um, to uh, complete an independent uh, fee estimate. Uh, they are undergoing that process now. So they have the uh, a proposed scope for construction administration um, for uh, phase two work. Um, so they'll review that. We'll have that at the, the June meeting. So they'll have their report. To, is that um, always a requirement? It is for contracts that are over one hundred thousand okay. dollars. So the FA has that um, built in to have, make sure that there's an independent look at what those fees are and make sure they're uh, reasonable with with the work that's being performed. Uh, as part of phase two, one thing I wanted to, to draw everybody's attention to is obstruction removal. Um, so in case you just to stand up some some drawings here that include uh, removal on both uh, the runway 13 end and runway 31 end. Um, some of these removals, uh, again, as part of the environmental assessment in the planning document that was done, uh, the FAA has asked us to project out uh, five additional years to make sure that you have clear approaches for five years in the future so we're not coming back and doing this um, again next year. Uh, so what that has done is it predicts the growth of the trees, but a lot of those obstructions are off airport property. Uh, so we wanted to, to bring that to, to you this morning just to show that um, there is some removals uh, off airport. Uh, so you can see the property lines on the property map uh, and then the removals that, uh, that will occur uh, as part of uh, phase, two, um, phase two project. Um, we're anticipating that the removals will be done over two winters. Uh, we have uh, work that could be done as soon as this December and then um, any remaining obstructions would be done on the, in the winter of 2020 to 2021. Um, we, uh, you know, as part of our process, we're going to work, uh, work with the commission to notify the landowners of any sort of obstructions that are out there. Um, Casey, do you know, or do we have easements on most of them, or is there something? Yeah, so I can kind of walk you through. If you look on the on the left side of the figure, this is the north end of the runway, the one three end. Um, you can see the airport property boundary is the dark black line. And then the purple hatch areas are areas that you have easements over. Um, so you have an easement right there. Um, and then the red line is um, your essentially the approach zone within your zoning. Um, and then there's a slope that comes off of that. So many of the trees 
um, also violate your zoning ordinance that you would be removing off of airport property too. So on the north end, um, there's three private parcel or three non-airport parcels, I should say, um, that are impacted to our Kuchichin County and or the city. Um, and then one is a private individual. Um, and then if you look at the name and the PID number in each parcel, the acreage there, that's the acreage of clearing that would be needed on that individual or city county parcel. Um, and then on the, the they, they were paid for their air, air navigation easements when they when would have been. Yep, that was secured. Yep. Okay. Um, and we will actually. Um, this is coming up later, but we'll be doing a property map update as part of the land acquisition project. Um, so we'll be pulling all that easement data, um, so we would have all the legal language from those easements as far as what the easement, what easement, what rights are granted in the easement to the airport commission. Um, and then you have your zoning ordinance as well that the trees would violate. And, and in the case of uh, Mr. Wayne Bayou, uh, Thor helped me, uh, or Commissioner Pavlik, I know that when we did the uh, uh, runway extension and we moved the ILS system out there, we, we purchased some of mm -hmm. his property, but we must have just purchased some air navigation also that uh, we didn't buy obviously didn't buy this property then. I don't, that, that's correct. That would be good just, to look at, because I, I just don't remember what combination property both. exactly we purchased. Mm -hmm. We got the rights. Yeah, it had. was Veo, Sobolewski, um, who's that by the gravel? There was a bar. A yeah. bar. Uh, um, who was that by the gravel pit? Um, there was seven, seven parcels yes. I think that we purchased. Uh, uh, yeah, on the, on the across the one three by the old highway. Yeah, yeah. across County Road Two. Um, I don't remember who, because we we had to, to place those uh, those that lighting system out in correct mm -hmm. in there. Yeah. So just anyway, that. Right. And, um, and so then, how about spill me down here? Yeah, so we'll get to that one. I've got a zoom up of that on the next okay. figure. Well, why don't we do that right now? So if you flip over to the next page, um, this, since it's kind of a small area, we put that on its own figure just to kind of zoom up a little bit. Um, so what the obstruction clearing on that property um, is actually due to the grading limits that are needed for the temporary runway. So this would be in phase three, not phase two. Okay. Um, but if you look at the black dashed line, um, those are the grading limits that are needed to meet the runway design standards. So this, we wouldn't go grade this far as part of phase two, we'd wait until phase three. And then your existing fence line, um, you can see it kind of come in in red and then it turns into a kind of a removal hatch. We would temporarily relocate that fence beyond the grading limits. Um, and then the relocation would be the yellow right okay. and then the fence would be put back once the project were done um i don't know sean do you have more about the grading yeah other than that just requires a temporary easement um, so there's going to be some paperwork that'll be required um, with that landowner um, in order to allow that to happen so um we're working with, with our staff to, to present that at a future meeting but i think we just wanted you to be, be aware that there will be an impact uh, just on the, the very small corner of that, that property and the impact of temporary right. yep. yes. Yeah, the fence of them would be relocated back to its original position. And, and uh, trees could be allowed to grow back okay. on this for this location. Um, and then on the right side of the, the front figure there, that's the south end of the runway. Again, it's a little bit, um, you can see the, the gray obviously is the tree removal. Um, there's some additional private property owners as well as, again, some areas that are also, Kuchiching County and the City of International Falls. Um, They're the hardest ones to deal with. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and and the gray again is it's needed for the um, the existing condition has nothing to do with the temporary runway. The temporary runway clearing is shown on in red on both the right and left side. So um, this is clearing that would need to be done largely regardless of um, the runway project. Well, I have a question. So these areas in gray that you're saying you're going to remove the trees, does that mean that from there on out that they will be maintained in a clear state? Yeah, I or think that. Or will trees be allowed to grow back? I mean, the um, I guess 
the airport is required to keep clear approaches. So, um, you know, their license mandates that they have clear approaches to, to the runway. So, um, you know, depending on where the trees are cleared to, once they in, uh, encroach on that clear zone or that, that surface, uh, they would be required for the airport license to be cleared again. Well, as I recall in the expansion, there were, there were areas where trees were, the tops were cut off, and but the trees themselves stayed. And then there was also some areas where there were stumps that were left in there, which impeded the ability to go in there and maintain this in a clear state. Right, exactly, yeah. And Army Corps of Engineers wouldn't allow us to, they were, they were one of the players in the funding, and they, they wouldn't let us, totally insane, the Army Corps of Engineers trumped the FAA uh, safety standards for it. Yeah, I understood. Well, we all, everyone, we, we everyone, that did. Picture. everyone did. It's like, what are you saying? We, we can't move the stumps? Yeah, you can cut off, you can leave the stumps. Okay. Yeah. Talk, you know, what, what is the it's danger phenomenal. to an aircraft? Think about that. And you're right, all, and all it causes is, is future, is future costs and maintenance and, and, and in an area where aircraft could possibly end up, right? Stumps, yeah. And wetlands got into it. Oh. It was a nightmare. And that's primarily the concern as you uproot all the stumps and then you in back the wetland that you disrupt it. I have, an, I have another question. I see it's labeled 1432. Is there, there a change in numbers on the main runway eventually too? That was, so that is the, during the center section of reconstruction of 1331, the taxiway is going to be used as a runway. Yeah. Um, and to um, help differentiate between the existing runway right. and the temporary runway, we've chosen to use different numbers. Oh, okay, because I was wondering if the magnetic alignment was sure. changing and yeah. put different sure. numbers in. It's a great question. That, that a really Just a question. safety feature. Right. Yeah, technically, uh, Fort Francis Airport is actually 10 degrees off of what it actually is. Uh, back in the day when Fort Francis built their, their runway, uh, 3113, uh, there was so much traffic and there was confusion at where they were, so uh, uh, Dad talked to the MOT and they actually said, yeah, it's a good idea, we'll change to 1230. So, okay. yeah, that's a good observation. Yeah. So, yeah, that temporary <coughs> runway <coughs> on the taxiway will be 1432. Okay. Which is a really good idea. But the main will stay 1331. Yeah, we're done, so I'll be back. Okay. Commissioner McBride, is right and left. Is removal yeah. to do with 1432? Only. As far as it would have to do with even, even if we were not doing the temporary. It, all of the areas that are shaded in gray have to do with 1331 and have nothing to do with the temporary runway. The areas in red in are red. needed for the temporary Just for runway. The temporary. Yep. Okay. All right, you know. I, unless you, that aspen out there, unless you take and spray it after you cut it, it it'll come up just like hairs on a dog's back. Overnight. Yes. Oh. Absolutely right. I'm going to write that one down. <laughs> <laughs> well, it comes up, you know. That's pretty good. It comes up so many, so many of those shoots will come up. I mean, it'll be. Uh, or some of my in laws. You, you can't go through it. And we do typically spray the, uh, you know, after we clear, since we can't take the stumps, you know, you get those offshoots right away. We'll also spray with uh, a growth inhibitor. Um, as part of the clearing, you know, to make sure that, you know, the limits keep the it going. going back. That's not five years. Okay. Yeah, to, to spray the chemical in the wetland to stop it. Is that fascinating? <laughs> there's yeah. there's a chemical that can do that, though, Thor. Yes, there is. <laughs> Walt, you've taught me a lot. <laughs> and everything else under that. Got on 3A, we'll kill the brush and oh. be selective on the grass. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect That's stuff. It's aquatic. Yeah. It's aquatic and not to worry about it. Like the moon surface for about two years, it's beautiful. It's out there. So. And they told us Agent Orange was safe to breathe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Their work won't really begin until next year, next December. So uh, some clearing could potentially happen as early as this it's, December, it's, okay. yeah, 2019, December 2019. Yeah. And that would most likely be all the on the airport stuff, and then we want to make sure that we work with the landowners to, uh, to do any other things. So that stuff might go in the next year. So, uh, just one other question, if I could, Mr. Chair. Have, have the landowners are going to be impacted? Have we had any contact yet? I don't believe so. Yeah, okay. there hasn't been uh, an official notification on, on that. Okay. And, uh, we're working with you know just figures of each parcel uh, to communicate that. All right. Maybe each. We may even have it already. Yeah. Yeah. So, once we talk about it here, you know they're going to be aware. Yep. Okay. So we'll make it. Okay. All right. All right. Further.
next item is um, the reimbursable agreement. And uh, the FAA uh, requires reimbursable agreements when construction impacts FAA owned equipment. And right now we have, um, there's a cable that goes from the existing vault building out to the VOR facility. It crosses the tax and the apron, the taxiway, and the runway. Uh, and that is owned by the FAA. Um, they are, uh, they want to make sure that um, we don't impact it to the point. They don't trust us to do it ourselves, so they like to have their own uh, people on site for when that happens. Um, the, their process, I think, from what you know, it's like any typical reimbursable agreement, if you're familiar with that, they basically say, this is what we estimate all these items are going to cost in order to do the evaluation to um, have FAA personnel on site. Um, so they make you pay for it up front. You're able to put that into your grant request, and then they draw from that um, from that amount uh, as they complete the work. Um, they always seem to um, overestimate to make sure they have enough money in their bank account when they're drawing through to do the work. Um, I'm hoping that's what they've done here because uh, they've requested $88,000. Um, $375.94 uh, through phases uh, two and three to monitor that work. Um, the draft supplemental, uh, I'm sorry, reimbursable agreement, I believe was coordinated with uh, Bob and Kyrie. You did receive a copy of that. Um, it's still in draft format, and I know we're not, um, you know, this can wait till the, uh, the June meeting. Um, but I think it's pretty much ironed out on the details and the money. So it's up to you if you want to um, decide on that now or wait till wait till June. I think we know we're going to have to pay it, and so I certainly uh, I think we should have a motion to uh, approve the reimbursable agreement and the payment of eighty-eight thousand three hundred seventy-five dollars and ninety-four cents. So. Uh, more. I would move that, but I would, uh, would add it, authorizing the chair if there are any minor uh, mm -hmm. changes. Uh, you're, you're free to do that. Then. Okay. I'll second. Second by Commissioner Nevin. Questions or discussion? Yeah. All right. The motion is again to uh, approve the reimbursable agreement and the payment of $88,375.94 to the FAA. Um, and uh, approving the uh, proper signatures, and if any uh, issues arise, the chair is empowered to uh, deal with those. With that, uh, if there's no further questions, we'll uh, have the uh, place the question. All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion is carried, and the reimbursable agreement and payment is approved. Thank you. Further. Same as land acquisition? Yeah, I passed out a memo update from ProSource that just has um, basically a status update on the property acquisition. Um, I think um, we covered a lot of it already with the earlier approvals. Um, the Showbirds are actively um, moving ahead with um, obviously the, the closing on June uh, 14th. Um, and they, they did sign a contract to purchase a modular home, um, which they will be essentially closing on that the, the, the next day with their final payment on June 15th and then moving home forward with the, the site prep and getting that um, home moved to their new site. Um, they do plan to be complete with that move and construction within three months. I know um, Jason at ProSource does feel that's a little aggressive, um, so um, he just kind of wanted to let you know that, um, you know, that lease you know with them could could um, go beyond 90 days if needed um, and Jason will be checking in with them to make sure they're making good progress on you know the site prep and uh, the construction um, throughout that process um, they are um, actively moving ahead with uh, kind of cleanup and packing um, he's got a few updates in here um, they are filling um, and, and I know this is a week or two old but they you know had started filling the dumpster that was provided by the Airport Commission um, and are working on that um, and it sounds like he's been scheduling with a scrapper to come and remove some of the old vehicles um, and then moving ahead with some of the logistics of, of how they're going to complete the move so it seems like you know good 
good progress and um, has been is continuing to be made. So good news there. So I think that's. Casey or Sean, do you know, I fail to write down the uh, the figure that um, we've approved is three hundred and twenty thousand. Mm. And I don't remember the. Maybe I'll have to call Steve. But I just want to be sure that the uh, city hall is is prepared to uh, to see that through. Okay. Was it? I wrote down three twenty. Three hundred twenty thousand something. Yeah, I don't yeah. remember exactly what it was. No, Steve had mentioned three twenty earlier in the meeting. Yeah. yeah. Any questions on just the process for relocation or where things are at? So if if there's any delays for showers moving, it's is that going to do anything with moving the weather station at all? No, we really have. Um, you know, I think we would be looking to clear that site um, next, next probably early summer or late spring, um, and then the weather service could move kind of late summer. So, um, so if there's any, because yeah. they're, they're, they're going to decide where to locate the uh, cement slab and, yep. and move the structure over yep. during the summer of 2020. Right. How much does purchases? Is that even refundable? Oh, all of it. Yep. 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 All of the, the purchase price and the relocation and all of the administrative pro sources contract, everything will be eligible for the FAA grant. Right. And that 95? Yes. Um, another thing that will be required, um, this is kind of a new FAA requirement, is an Exhibit A property map. So you have a property map that's included as part of your airport layout plan that shows all of the parcels on the airport, a parcel number, um, the amount of acreage. Um, but the FAA has a new um, process, a national process, to prepare what they call an Exhibit A property map. Um, so this is something that is being triggered at airports um, over the last couple of years um, where most airports don't have this. Um, so anytime you touch land on your airports, so you're buying land or selling land, or if you were to be doing a new, a brand new from scratch airport layout plan today, these are, this is a requirement. Um, and it's a much more extensive and detailed effort into preparing that property map. So the FAA actually requires that you go and do title research for all of your property um, so that um, you can provide more detailed information on your property and then you also um, are researching, you're basically going way back in history and looking for any encumbrances on the property. So if there's utility easements, um, mineral rights that belong to someone else, all of that gets researched and documented. So it's much more detailed than typically what's on an ALP um, and this is required now of all airports um, and land acquisition triggers this requirement. Um, so you'll be required to prepare an Exhibit A property map. Um, and then the other thing that we'll do is we take all of the property descriptions that are in all of the, the title work, and they all get drawn out um, by a surveyor. And then we also have to document are there gaps between parcels or overlaps in parcels um, and document any, any issues on the airport. It's not an exercise where you know we find things that are wrong and then the FA makes you fix them. They just want you to be aware of them. And then you would only need to fix them if it would be required for, say, a project. Say you were going to do a project on land that you thought you owned and then you found out you didn't own, that would be something you'd need to fix. But if there's a gap between parcels, they, they wouldn't make you fix that. Um, we would also document any unrecorded encumbrances. So if there's a use of airport property that there isn't really an easement for, but it's a use, we would have to document that. Um, or um, if the airport had an un, or in a better way. So a lot of times we'll find, you know, there might be an unrecorded right away, um, or there's not a legal right away, but there's a road, you know, that kind of goes along the parcel line. Um, we would assume there's a right away um, there, so that would be kind of an unrecorded encumbrance. Um, so all of that gets researched and um, documented in this Exhibit A property map. There's a report, a pretty thick report that goes with it that has a lot of detail about each parcel, the history of the parcel, any encumbrances, um, and then that report kind of gets submitted with the map. This is an exercise um, that's kind of, you do it once and then you don't really have to go through the big effort again. Um, you would only need to, say if you bought land five years from now, you would only update that one parcel. You wouldn't have to do the large exercise again. Um, so this will be required as part of the land acquisition grant. It is eligible again for the FAA funding at 95%. Um, so we will be working with the FAA on, on the scope of what, what that will look like for inclusion in the land grant. How long would it take to put something like that together? That sounds 
it is yeah it is a big effort um we um the the title research does take a few months just to kind of request and get all the documents and then it's another few you know months to, to prepare the map but um, if we you know started work right away i would expect you know a little bit under a year to go through the whole process and, and the fa's review also does take um, a chunk of time because it is a, a heavy lift for them to get in and review all the documents and so are you looking for approval to undertake that? Do Not you, at this time. Just kind of providing an update that know, that will be do coming. Do we need to contract that out to someone, or are you going to contract that out, or how are we? we what is the process? Yeah, so we would do the work. Um, we typically um, have ProSource help us out with the title research side of it. Um, and in this case, Jason's really either already familiar with some of the property around your airport, um, so there'll be a benefit there. Um, so we would, would, would do it, ProSource would be a sub to us for the title research, um, and then we would, we're anticipating having a, a contract proposal for you to consider in June for that work. Okay, because, you know, I, I, I recall those pieces that we, we purchased for the, uh, uh, when we did the 900 foot extension to the, to the airport and, and moved all of the lighting, um, and I remember, uh, Joe Boyle was the attorney, and I, I hope all of that was recorded. I, I got to think that it was. It is. You, yeah. you think it is for it sure? Is. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Because I, I know that, uh, that, that there have been times that Joe just kept files in his office, yeah. and we never, they never got recorded, so we, we need to make sure. Minor. So this, this would help us to uh, clear all that up. Yep. Okay. Yep, and it would, it's, you know, it, it should provide a good resource that now you're going to have a report that in very plain language explains all of your parcels. So if there's an issue in the future on an area where you need to clear some trees where you have an easement, you can go to this report and say, oh, we have an easement and it grants us the right to go in, clear a tree to the ground. Or it grants us the right to go in and clear to a certain height. Or what does it mean? What is that? What does that easement mean? What does it grant? Because um, I would guess that you have many easements that all have different language on what your rights actually are. Um, so it kind of provides a plain language resource for you to, to hopefully be able to um, consult in the future um, to help answer some of those questions. So this is both fee title and air navigation? Yep. Would yep. be all um, that the airport holds. Right, and then also any encumbrances. So if a utility company owns an easement over some of your land, all of that gets um, included in there too. Well, because I think... 332 coming across, uh, we own property on both sides of it, mm -hmm. and so, uh, and, and now we own property on both sides of 108, 108 yeah. and so all of that, uh, there'll be roadways and... Road easements? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. We'll see for that in, in, June. in June. Thank you. Yep. Moving on to phase three, um, we also have an independent fee estimate uh, in progress for design of phase three. Um, so again, we're kind of combining phase uh, two construction and then we're looking ahead to phase three design as that work is planned for, um, we'll design it over the next year. Um, we will uh, potentially bid phase three in June of 2020 with construction in 2021. So we're just continuously working ahead through all the, all the phases. Uh, so phase three design, uh, we'll be um, presenting a proposal in uh, at the June meeting as well. So it'll be a, a busy meeting. Um, also for phase three, we are working through um, uh, the weather balloon launch facility relocation. We had uh, uh, Thorne and Bob Weir on the call uh, with uh, the FA team and, and the National Weather Service. Um, to relocate that facility, we're, we're kind of getting into the details on how that move will actually work. Um, and the way it's uh, indicated is that um, you would uh, relocate that facility, um, bid the design of the slab, and, you know, some of the infrastructure that would go into that, and then um, put bidding documents out for a contractor to actually move the actual facility. Um, obviously with uh, review with the, the National Weather Service uh, and then all those costs are reimbursable with the FAA through the grant process so um, the <laughs> FAA then is supporting the move uh, so it's working through that process but it's it's just uh, the, uh, the National Weather Service wants the airport to do the actual move so um, yeah I, I, other than you know the, the local share that would come with it the FAA is supportive of it 
Um, so it's just uh, another component of the project. So that's actually projected for phase three. So that would be your next year's grant. So it's all um, working through that. Um, the scoping process that we're working with as part of these meetings is making sure everybody's on the same page on who does what. I think there was a little confusion on, on the National Weather Service's uh, uh, perspective on if the FAA was covering costs or if, if uh, the National Weather Service was covering the costs. So they're, they're working out the memorandum of understanding, which will be forwarded to you. But, but now we're, that's going to move in 2020. So uh, are we going to be letting that contract uh, sometime this winter or what, what is the timeline? And, and as I recall on the, the phone call, there was some concern about getting um, for a lack of a better term, cabling or getting uh, lines run over to that facility. And I think we're going to have to do some uh, drilling yep. or, or what's the term for directional drilling, yeah. drilling yeah. And, and putting uh, uh, yep. cables or lines through there. And, and is that, are we going to wait till 2020 to do that or are we going to, would we be doing that ahead of time? So the, it would most likely, I guess we haven't worked with the National Weather Service on how they want to see that, uh, it would most likely be one bidding package on the site preparation and the relocation of the structure. Um, yeah, that would include connectivity to the terminal building and their, their office here in the, in the new terminal. Um, so it's kind of tying all that together, the new slab and the relocating the structure, so many components of the project. Um, it would be scheduled for, you know, with, in concert with the property acquisition. Um, so it would probably most likely be left in the spring with work happening in that fall uh, to, to do the, the site preparation on that uh, in anticipation of the temporary runway operation in 2021 uh, starting in May or June. So it all has to be done in the fall because um, we won't have an opportunity in the spring to, to do that work prior to the runway shutdown and the temporary runway operation. Please. Getting back to the, the relocation side of it, they want us to do that. Are we going to have to front money and then apply back to get reimbursed, or how is that going to work? It uh, could potentially work out that way, um, depending on the grant reception timing and uh, fund um, the funding for it. You know, there won't be a reimbursable agreement from the FAA side. I, I guess I'm not certain, you know, there might be a small one from the National Weather Service if they, if they want any funding, but it sounds like they're doing all the work themselves and they're okay with the move. Yeah, um, they want to do all the electrical work themselves. Yeah. yeah. And then we would just um, have to bid the project like we would any construction project, and that reimbursement process would be the same as a runway reconstruction. So, I mean, that's something we're going to have to make sure that city and county understand. Uh, yep. That's, that's in the future here when we have to have some dollars. Right. So. And, and I, I guess the only reason for asking about this uh, cabling and, and uh, directional drilling is that the city has got work this summer. We've got a firm coming in that's doing that, but it, we're not going to be ready in that time period, so we'll have to wait till next uh, the next building season for that to occur. Sure. sure. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. Further. Other than the funding update, um, bonding bill. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't know if I have good news on that. I mean, maybe you have more information to share. I didn't get in touch with Mike Larson before this, but I think they were lucky to get a funding package together in general. So. Yeah, I, I, I don't know that, that they've got a bonding bill this year or, or agreement for one. I just don't know what the, uh, the legislature is still. Uh, they're still having meetings. Uh, committees are still meeting, and there's plans to have a special session tomorrow but they may not be ready, they may have it Friday, they may have it next week. So uh, it's a very fluid situation in St. Paul. And uh, there's agreements and disagreements. So. Yep, so I think that's, uh, unfortunately we don't have much to, to report on that. Uh, um, so it's just gonna wait and see on the bonding bill. Um, just kind of going through what the grant is going to look like. Again, the FA grant is uh, part of the supplemental. Um, the supplemental grant, as far as we're aware, will cover all the elements of the project. So I'm going to go back to Bonnie just for a second. Mm -hmm. I think that June is for 2020 requests, preliminary requests. Yes, yeah. Is and that something uh, we need to have prepared? Well, what we're certainly we're going to be looking for um, the million dollars. If, if there isn't a bonding bill this year, then, then yeah. we 
At least that million dollars. I don't know who's taking the lead on that. Is uh, it Mike or is someone? No, we'll, because we'll check in with Mike to find out what the latest. If you would, um, because I think we've got to have that by mid June. Mid June, I think the uh, preliminary request. Minnesota management yep. budget is asking for that. I, I looked at that sheet yesterday, and. Uh, wasn't sure who should be taking the lead on that one. County got notification, I think, last week. So we, Are you uh, asking for but, something uh, under the bonding bill? Under a 24. Oh, okay, yeah, for the uh, overpass. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Kyra, I know you worked with Mike a little bit. That was a month or two ago. Is this the same, like, kind of getting it set up in the system, or was that something else? That was getting me set up in the system so that I can have access when the time comes to be able to go in and well, we'll take that as an action item check yeah. on because I think there is some strategy now. We'll for, need to know here in the next week or 10 days. Because if there is, there might be some strategy on, you know, depending on the timing of phase two, we can, if we don't get it there, we can incorporate some of those costs, um, yeah. try to wrap in as much and as we can. Generally, yeah. there's not a bonding bill in the budget year, it's generally in the off year, and so next year would be the year, yeah. and uh, hopefully. Uh, Yep, we can be eligible for a million if we don't get it this year. We'll check in with Mike and follow up with the report right. on that status. Thank you. Good question. Further? The MnDOT Aeronautics Grant covers, um, so generally FA is 95% uh, uh, for International Falls. MnDOT would cover 2.5%, then the local share would be 2.5%. MnDOT has a cap of $200,000. Um, I think what I would recommend is uh, writing um, MnDOT a letter, you know, depending on the situation of the bonding bill. If you don't get a bonding bill this year, um, you know, you may, your local share may be in excess of the 2.5% just because yes. of that MnDOT cap. Yep. Um, I think, uh, you know, in my opinion, you have a pretty good story from the supplemental funding, all this infusion of cash uh, from the federal level into the state of Minnesota to try to request more than the, the 200000 Um they have a pretty strict policy, so I'm not sure if there's any any uh, leeway from from their end, but it doesn't hurt to ask. So, well, and I think uh, Director of Aeronautics yes, Isaacson will be here tomorrow, and so I think we'll try to have a conversation with her and see what what they want. Um, I had talked to uh, to Senator Bach about it and asked him, you know, should we be trying to uh, do something supplemental in the budget? And uh, he did not see that as being a, uh, a workable situation, trying to get additional money for uh, MnDOT Aeronautics to give to International Falls. And so uh, that's why we went with the million dollar bond uh, attempt. And so uh, um, I think if they have more, if they have some money, they might be willing to make it available, but I'm not just, I think we need to have that conversation with her. Sure. And I, um just as a side, kind of related to MnDOT's available funding. Um, so three states, or sorry, three airports in Minnesota receive supplemental, the other two being Bidette and Detroit Lakes. Um, one kind of cool thing for the general aviation airports is that supplemental is 100% funding for them. Um, so what that does is it frees up, so Bidette had a multi-million dollar project, Detroit Lakes had a multi-million, very similar to your total cost. Um, so MnDOT was anticipating having to contribute there. They're, they will not have to contribute to those two very large projects. So in theory, they may have some additional money, but very good. I don't know. Well, it's good, good information. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You'll have to use that to probably yeah. talk. Yeah. 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 Well, I know you got money. Though. That's, <laughs> that's yeah. a talking yeah. point. Yeah. 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 Yes. yes. All right, further on the, the runway reconstruction. So in summary, um, the grant request will be the environmental assessment, property acquisition services, the actual property acquisition and relocation, the exhibit A of property map, construction, uh, phase two construction, the uh, engineering for phase two construction, and then the phase three design and the reimbursal agreement. So I think just to really show exactly all the work uh, you guys have been undertaking here this last year, but uh, that's what your 2019 grant request uh, will include as part of that supplemental uh, application. Very good, great work. Public involvement. Um, we had a FA meeting uh, on May 14th. Um, it was about an hour and a half long, so we had a good discussion with that. Um, we had a 
public <laughs> hearing meeting on May 20th. Uh, we're also going to have well, uh, another one. <laughs> leftover cookies. <laughs> leftover cookies and orange juice, yeah. Uh, tonight at uh, 7 p.m. at City Hall. Um, we also have a um, airfield um, airport user tenant meeting on June 3rd at 1 p.m. Um, we're going to have a, a neighbor notification go out uh, just to the neighbors to, to just notify of some increased concern. June 3rd, 1 p.m. here. Uh, yes, yep. That, that would actually, yep. Anything else that you can think of? So. That's the sound of a king here right there. Quite gentle. Wishful thinking. Yeah. <laughs> and then the next meeting for the FAA coordination is June 12th, from 10 a.m. to 12 yes. at this time. And that was a tentative meeting based on uh, all things to shake out over the next uh, next couple weeks. So. Very good. That's all we have. So. Is that all? Is that all? That's that's it. All? That's it. We can be, I feel like we've gone on in the past. Want to bring, bring you some food and nourishment? <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. It's going to waste away over here. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you. Great work, and uh, thank you, Sean. Thank you for your partnership with the uh, SDH and all of that's happening there. Oh. We'll move to uh, full business. I'd like to uh, try to wrap up in the next 20 minutes if we can. Thank you. Um, we'll go down to item B under the uh, full business, and uh, Kyra has uh, secured from uh, Price Appraisal. The appraisal of the Boyer property, and they have the property to the south of the Schoberg property, and we're at the, and I want to say the February or March meeting, and asked if uh, the airport would consider uh, purchase of their property. Uh, I don't remember exactly how many acres. Um. Oh, ten acres, ten plus ten yep. plus or minus. Ten. Okay, and the my understanding is the uh, appraisal is for ten thousand dollars. Now, this would not be uh, eligible for state or federal funding. It would be uh, uh, local funding only, and uh, but they do want to sell, and it's an opportunity to pick up that that ten acres and and uh, protect the airport. Um, I think the question becomes uh, to the city and county, are we uh, prepared to, uh, and, and maybe we, we budget it for next year, see if we can, if we can work in a, a purchase agreement for uh, 2020, of 5,000 each. No, 10,000. 10,000. Yeah. I, yep. I looked down here and saw 10,000. Yep. But it's an opportunity that we're going to need at the way. Absolutely. So, um, should we have um, Kyra, Thor, and I uh, meet with the Boyers and talk to them about the, yep. a purchase agreement and, sure. and show them the, uh, the appraisal? All right. Yep. We, will, we will move forward with that. I would just. Mr. Chair, the subject of the sale would be cleaning of the property. I know there's some yeah, yeah, there's some there's a lot of materials on there. Yeah, material yes. on there. Yeah. They probably won't charge us. Okay. Other thoughts on that uh, issue? So that will be coming back to the airport commission. Go to item C, uh, the Kita Airport Administration contract renewal. And Kyra, what, what is that? Uh, do, we have, do you have a paper on that or just? Uh, I'll just explain. Um, at the last meeting, you had approved the contract. However, when I went back um, and was going to have uh, uh, Mullen's office redo the contract, um, we had to do some additional research as the rates weren't adding up correctly. So between Sue and I looking back and doing some history, um, I found that in past in the past minutes in July of 2017, the commission had approved a rate uh, increase at 2.5% from $28.66 to $29.38. And then in August of 2018, the commission increased that rate at 3% from $29.38 to $30.26. 
So I just needed to confirm at what rate um, the commission would like to have that increase made at. And so we would be using the base uh, thirty dollars and twenty six cents. Yes. An and hour. Correct. And how many hours? They average each month. It's it's hard to. One month might be sixty. This last month was ninety five. So. Okay. It's, it, it's a with the projects and different things like that. It all depends what's going on that month. So. And so an increase is in order. Uh, with Kita. At the last meeting, you approved a two per, a two percent increase. Two percent increase to that. Yep. And so, what would that uh, put that figure at? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 One abstention. And one abstention. So there will be four for the motion and one abstention. The motion carries and the rate will be $30.86. Thank you. Go to new business. Thing there, we'll go to the manager's report. I've covered most of most of uh, my needs in our discussion. Um, Good note on employments, uh, reservations are, are significantly higher. Brian, you've seen that also. We, uh, uh, Bob and I have been, in, have been emailing this in, in the circle with uh, Delta slash SkyWest folks and, and uh, numbers are up significantly for reservations for the summer, so that's fantastic news yeah. to add to, to our already increasing employment. So uh, it looks, 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 like, looks like a phenomenal summer of growth again, which is wonderful. Please, Brian. In, in a couple of weeks, there are going to be two more flights, too. There you go. Do you know what's, what the dates are for that? Uh, January, uh, June 8th. Uh, June 8th? What, what Saturday, we go to three flights. Yeah. Uh, for the weekend? For that day. For that day. Yeah. And, and so we will have 14 flights a week or 15 with that one? Because right now we're at 12 that we're... We're at two, have two days. 14. Because Wednesday's staying the same. Okay. Who's yeah. this guy that keeps locking my own? I have no idea. Call security. I have no idea who that is. Call security. Yeah. <clears throat> so, and, and again, uh, life has been such for uh, Thor, and, and uh, I have not had an opportunity to, to uh, meet with uh, or discuss with Dan Belmont uh, from Sky West mm -hmm. about the possibility of giving up some winter day flights to use in the summer. I, I don't know if we want to do that. Uh, I, I just don't know how that would work. I, so I know he continues to uh, cry every two weeks. He sends an email and you, have you had an opportunity to discuss it? We really haven't had. That's correct. Yeah. Um, it's, it's hard to... It would be helpful to know what, what days of the week and really be able to look at when we're down because I know that there are probably days when we only have 20 or 30, maybe even less than 20 people get on the plane. Mm -hmm. And you could look at the possibility of, of having some of those that we might only have one flight that day, save those for the summer where we could have an additional one. I don't know. I mean, I, it's, yeah, it, it, it's a difficult equation. You know, there's a lot in that mix and, and how you can affect the, you know, the, the, the picture and anyway. all, the holistically, yeah. But, uh, um, yeah, he, he did, uh, his last email did say that the uh, uh, reservations are up significantly for the summer, so. And, and they changed the, uh, the time 
so it's earlier on that second flight of the day, so that's going to help because they can make more connections here in uh, Minneapolis. So. Mm -hmm. What's that you know, Terry? Uh, it's moving up a half an hour. Very good. Yeah. And that, that itself is helpful. Right. You know, Definitely. And the planes are filling up now. We started mm -hmm. this week with full planes. Excellent. Absolutely. Um, go ahead. Go. Yeah. Kind of a side note, uh, weather system, weather patterns uh, in northern Minnesota this spring. As of a week ago, Duluth had more snow in May than the, than the total accumulation of January, which is fascinating. <laughs> Just interesting, really phenomenal weather. <clears throat> Other than that, thank you all. Um, nice work. to have our first meeting here today, and uh, yes. thank you for everyone's efforts. Great thank to you. be back here. Thank, thank you. you. That's it. And, and I guess uh, certainly would be in order to uh, give our condolences to the Anderson family and the loss of our our first uh, airport manager, uh, uh, Francis William Anderson. Uh, we had uh, a week ago uh, today, a week ago tomorrow, uh, was the uh, his services and uh, uh, very well attended by the community, and so. Uh, Condolences again to the to the family for that, and I know Thank tomorrow you. Uh, that we'll be having services for the Joyce Anderson. Yeah. So it's been a uh, it's been a difficult uh, couple you. of weeks here. Yeah. For yeah. the uh, for the family. Appreciate that very much. It's very kind. But, uh, yeah, she passed the day after my dad's funeral. It was uh, apparently wanted to go. And, uh, Get together. So, but thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for all the support. Well, I hope a lot of memories, good memories. Thank you. All right, we'll go to the secretary's report. Okay, uh, employment records you can see in the packets there. Uh, we were up again for the month uh, in April. And then there was also a Sun Country flight that came in. In April, and then there will be another Sun Country here coming up at the beginning of June. Um, I received a proposal for services uh, from Erickson Lawn Care uh, in regards to the fertilizer and herbicide. I'm wondering what the Commission, if they'd like to continue with those services. The cost would be $500 in the spring and $500 in the fall for a total of $1,000. Or uh, any, any concerns with that? I, I, I think the service is great. The uh, service is fantastic. I, I'd recommend Okay, them. motion by Commissioner yeah. McBride to Absolutely. approve the... Uh, customary we've been doing that. So. Yes. Yeah. Um, keeps the grounds looking great and they, I know that in addition to that they trimmed up all of the yeah. uh, spruce trees along the, the road there. Very nice so, uh, family to work so with. We have a motion by Commissioner McBride who is okay. second by Commissioner Bullard to uh, have uh, Erickson Lawn Care at $500 in the spring and $500 in the fall to do their uh, fertilizing and uh, weed control. Discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion is carried, and the uh, lawn care is approved. Thank you. Further, Kyra. Uh, next, um, I was doing some thinking on airport uh, artwork for in the airport. Yes. Um, my thought would be to put out a, uh, an RFP of some sort requesting all local artists um, to submit a photo of a piece of art that they would like to have displayed in the terminal that would be geared more towards landscape than, um, you know, that sort of thing, or the airport, whether it be Northern Lights, Looms, or, you know, something that goes with the area or, and highlights the area. Um, they would be responsible for the printing and framing of that piece of artwork, and in return, um, the airport would give them the, the advertisement and maybe do a little name tag of a, you know, saying who donated the piece of art to the airport. Um, that way they would get that recognition. Um, there would be very little cost to the airport for that artwork. Um, and they are, the commission ultimately then would have the ultimate say of who's, you know, which artwork is going to be displayed and where um, the artwork can be kept up for, you know, X amount of time or it can be, you know, rotated. However, the commission would choose to do so. 
weeks. But that's just kind of my thought process and in, in incorporating. There's so many local artists around, I think, that are very good with art and, you know, getting something different from everyone. Can we work anything out with the National Park Service? We are. We're still working on that. Um, they are taking that south wall in the baggage claim area. Um, so Bob DeGross and um, Tanya Sholia are working on a piece of art to go in there, and I believe it's going to be almost a full wall display of some sort. So I think my wife, Carol, would be very uh, opposed to me judging any art. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave it. that up to you. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the best artwork great. you have is that welcome to the ice box of the nation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come off that jet bridge. That big taking sign. pictures, That's getting good. their picture taken in front of all of us. Yes, yeah. We saved that from the old turn room. Pretty yeah, that's great. And and also your father's plaque, do you have that one? I do, because correct. We need to have that mounted uh, in the turn room. Can I car go ahead and share? We've we've chatted about that. Okay. Yes, I will contact um Fair Child Signs to see what they would charge to Get that one up and like so they did with the other one. There's consensus uh, with the commission. We'll have uh, uh, Kyra go ahead and, and put that RFP out and see if uh, there are folks who wish to donate a, a piece of. Uh, well, if you have a motion. Okay. Yeah. All right. Motion by Commissioner McBride to uh, have an RFP for uh, donation of uh, art uh, or um, camera. It's pictures. Uh, yeah, photography yeah. That, that can be sculpture, displayed whatever, and, sure. and, uh, sculpture, whatever. and they would yeah. be given uh, recognition. Second. Second by Commissioner Nevin. Questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion to uh, move forward with that RFP signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion is carried. Thank you. <coughs> All right, um, further, Kara? Uh, that is all I have. All right, commission members, Commissioner McBride? We need a clock. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> With a buzzer on it, you're like yeah, a clock. Yeah. Well, we need to actually stop watching. Yeah. 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 Uh, and the employment flights, I got to thank my wife for flying all her girlfriends out to Florida and back in <laughs> April. Great. I think you filled up one plane. <coughs> <laughs> How's, how's the TV conversation been going in the secure room? <laughs> Must be. <laughs> uh, Get a kick out of that one. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, just mm, last week, five days ago, there was a call and there was some customer that wanted to watch something. I, I'd be honest with you, I took the call and I don't remember what they wanted the channel changed to and it was like literally like one hour before flight time and I just said, okay, we'll, we'll consider it and frankly we didn't. Okay. But uh, uh, yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, there's, there's a lot of different ideas out there, and, and uh, there's, not, there's not a lot of acceptance in the, in the group of. You know. I, remember, I remember the state when we had the weather chair on all the time, and that left had to be because <laughs> they have a special program on there. Some kind of an airline crash. Yeah, 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 they couldn't watch. Yeah. <laughs> That's all. All right. I'll get a little humor. Yeah. Commissioner Pavlik. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Roller. Nothing. Nothing. Good. Mr. I, I would just, you know, you look at the history of the airfield here and, and where it's at today and with this project and now the runway and I think Francis would be um, really proud, you know, where, where he started this thing and yeah, where it ended up and it was a really a, a wonderful send off to, you, to your father. Thank Can you thank your mother? I'm sorry for, for your loss. Oh, but thank you. But it was, uh, it was uh, Fran did a great job with bringing in some of the history and some of the colorful characters that made yeah. this airport and make it what it is today, so. Thank you very much. Huge Part contribution. Of, so. Thank you. That's it. Very good. I have uh, nothing at this time. Um, again, the uh, ribbon cutting tomorrow at 1 o'clock here. <coughs> Kita here first, right? Pardon? We have Kita here at 9.30. We have Kita at 9.30. Yes. Here. Yep, and here at uh, this conference table. Come on. Um, the next meeting then is uh, June the 26th at 8 a.m. here in the uh, conference room. Nothing further to come before the uh, commission. We'll stand adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.